We're now live, Chair. Okay, thank you. Can everybody hear me okay? I assume you can. Um, welcome to tonight's meeting of the Planning Application Committee. Um, just to let everybody know, this meeting is being live streamed. Uh, it's also being uh, recorded to be put out on YouTube uh, later on. Um, it's also a good opportunity just to remind members to, uh, uh, well, not members, anybody really, to switch your phones off or put them on to silent. I know some people will have to have their phones on maybe as a secondary um, device. Okay, so that takes us on, uh, on to item number two, which is apologies. Um, I had apologies from Councillor Lloyd, who's been substituted by Councillor Pomfret, and Councillor Gran, who's been sub substituted by Councillor Warmsley. Um, I don't think there's any others. Is there, Victoria? Just confirm it, please. There isn't. I'm just checking that Councillor Wormsley's joined us. Yes, I'm present. Oh, sorry, I've got such a long list today. <laughs> Thank you. I'm just going to see if I can't. No, I can't. It's all right. Some of them are very, very faint. Um, item number three is to confirm the minutes of the meeting held on the 12th of January. Everybody happy with that? Okay, thank you. Item four is to receive any declarations of disclosable pecuniary and other interests in accordance with the Members' Code of Conduct. That's if they're not already recorded within the agenda. And if you become aware of something, you know, just let us know at that, that time anyway. Councillor Wormsley. Thank you, Chair. Just to state, obviously, as a substitute member, my uh, declaration of interests are therefore not in the agenda, but they are available online for all to see. Thank you. Right. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Item five takes us on to declarations of contact. If anybody's been contacted by anybody about any of the applications, um, I was certainly contacted by Mr. Reese Burris. Um, <coughs> uh, and also Linda Burton of the Bedworth Society. I believe all members have probably had the same. Councillor Tandy. Thank you, Chair. Yes, exactly the same um, as you have. And also by email from Hawkesbury Village Association on item one, Chair. Yeah, OK, yeah. Well, yeah, I think we've all had those. Uh, Councillor Wilson. Yes, Chair, just to confirm the same declarations of um, contact as yourself, Chair. Yeah, OK. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think every member was uh, sent them sent out so we can record it as that. Um, in which case it takes us on to applications where the public have indicated a desire to speak. If I just run through that um, for people, and I'll probably have to do it again on the, the second item as well in fairness, but um, under the Constitution, you're allowed to speak for three minutes. Um, I'll, I'll, well, I will be strict on that, providing I hear the timer go off. It wasn't very loud last time. Um, and <coughs> it will start by the officer presenting the report, and then uh, <coughs> uh, we will take the speakers um, in the order that we've got them. Just so that... I'm assuming members have had the same list as me, but just in case, on application number one, um, we've got Mr. Jonathan Adams, who's speaking as the agent, Councillor Brown, who is an objector, Nicola Betts, who is an objector from Hawkesbury Village Action Group, Chris Young QC, supporting the application, Councillor Glass, who is a ward councillor, uh, 
and it was remiss of me. I should have also uh, welcomed. We do have uh, representatives from the county highways team: Karen Watkins, Joanne Archer, and Alan Law. Um, I'll do a similar thing when we get to the second item. Okay, so that takes us to item number one then, which is uh, the Black Horse Road application, which was def deferred from the last meeting for further information around highways. Jackie? Okay, th thank you, yeah, Councillor. Thank you. Can you hear me okay, I take it? Yeah, well, I can. Okay. Yeah, okay, and you can see the presentation in front of you. Yes. Yep. OK, right. This application is for the erection of 204 dwellings, access, community building, allotments, orchard, park and open spaces, provision, cycle and pedestrian routes, landscaping and associated highway works and infrastructure at the former Hawkesbury Golf Course. This application is for phase one of the whole site and an outline application will be submitted for the rest of the site in the near future. Members will recur. Uh, recall that they deferred this application at the last committee in order to allow the traffic surveys and other information submitted by Hawkesbury Village Action Group to be assessed by Warwickshire County Council Highways so the full highways implications of the application could be determined and for further information assessment of the adoption of the site and those parts which are proposed to not be adopted and the implications of this. The agent for Hawkesbury has sent in a written response following the deferral, which has been sent to committee members. Objections have been received as details on the agenda, pages 20 to 23, raising issue, issues such as increased traffic, lack of school places, GP, lack of GP provision, impact on wildlife and ecology, loss of greenbelt land, noise, noise pollution, presence of mine shafts, increased overlooking and flooding. You'd move on to uh, screen two, the second presentation, which isn't actually moving. Just bear with me a second. Got it. Sorry about that. Right. In terms of the principle of development, the site was previously in the green belt, but was removed as part of the borough plan under policy DS7. Policy DS5 of the Borough Plan refers to a number of sites allocated for residential development and associated infrastructure, and this application site forms part of strategic allocation HSG12. Under that allocation, there is to be provision for at least 380 dwellings. This current application is for 204 dwellings, which is less than the number of dwellings identified in the allocation. An application is expected to be submitted for the rest of the site, as I say, in the near future. A total of approximately 500 dwellings on the whole site. However, this current application is only considering 204, 204 dwellings and cannot consider any part of the allocation which is outside the application site boundary. An illustrative master plan has been submitted at this stage to show that most of the requirements of policy HSG 12 can be accommodated on the site. Therefore, it's considered that the principle of developing this site for a mix of residential, community uses and open space has been established through the allocation of the site in the borough plan and the re relevant policies within it. In terms of affordable housing, policy H2 of the Borough Plan requires 25% of all new developments to be affordable on sites of 15 dwellings or more. A total of 51 affordable units are proposed, which equates to 25% and is therefore considered acceptable. Of the affordable units, 12 are one bedrooms, four of which are bungalows, 19 are two bedrooms, 17 are three bedrooms and three are four bedrooms. The council's housing team have confirmed they have no, have no objection to this mix. On the addendum, there is a little bit more um, them confirming the acceptability of the mix. 
um, as per the deferred item uh, uh, from last time. The Affordable Housing SPD 2020 recommends a 10 year split of 74 social affordable and 26 intermediate housing mix, which will pre be provided on the site. The Affordable Housing SPD states that to promote inclusive communities, affordable housing, housing should not be identified from other forms of housing within a housing development and be distributed evenly amongst market housing. The SPD states that appropriate cluster sizes will depend on the size of the development. For sites of 200 to 500 dwellings, as per this site, the SPD recommends three to eight clusters with a maximum of eight, 15 units in each. It is considered that this is met as the site proposes five clusters, which are spread evenly throughout the site. There is one cluster of 18 units, but it is considered that this cluster is sensible as the cluster forms a reasonably sized development parcel and only marginally exceeds the maximum figure set out. Officers consider that this is acceptable. NHBC Council Housing and Planning Policy also have no objections on the clusters. While some are adjacent to the railway lines, so are a number of market houses. Your addendum provides provision, provi uh, ad additional information, as I've stated, by the council housing team following the deferral. This sets out the position of the affordable housing mix and their reasoning why they have no objection to the mix. In terms of general market housing, the market housing mix from 2013 indicates there is greatest need in the borough for three bedroom properties at 53%, followed by two bedroom properties, 33%, then four bedroom properties at 8.9%. The following proposal will provide one bedroom properties, 3%, two bedroom properties, 38%, three bedroom properties, 48%, and four bedroom properties, 11%. It's considered that the proposed provision is in accordance with the market housing mix required and therefore acceptable. In relation to visual amenity, Neneaton and Bedworth Borough Council commissioned a landscape character assessment in 2012, which was updated in 2017 and has been used to inform the borough plan. The landscape strength was considered moderate and the landscape condition considered poor for the area. The landscape character assessment update has suggested a number of guidelines for new development within HSG 12, which includes using woodland to soften uh, views of the urban edge, creating a high quality frontage to new development along the canal, variation of built form of the new urban edge, for example, by varying building heights, house types and materials and incorporating existing water bodies and public rights of way within the development. The concept plan SPD for HSG 12 states that the western edge will add a new linear woodland parallel to the railway in order to reinforce, reinforce existing outline outgrown hedgerows and to screen views of the industrial estate from the park. A landscape master plan has been submitted with the application which shows an area of woodland planting to part of the western boundary. However, the majority of that boundary is shown as wildlife grassland. Notwithstanding the detail shown on the landscape master plan, a condition is suggested that full landscaping plans including the planting species along the western boundary is submitted. The proposed built development is out facing in relation to the existing residential development. The proposed open space and the proposed allotments which provides visual interest and a positive relationship between the different uses. The primary north-south spine road is designed as a boulevard flanked by semi-detached and link detached houses. The dwellings are arranged to clearly define the line of the street. A similar approach is taken to the east-west primary link road. The dwellings are predominantly two-storey apart from the four bungalows. Materials consist of brick with some render and other de uh, details such as canopies, chimneys, sill detailing and bay windows. It is considered that this adds interest to the site. A materials plan has been submitted which proposes brick walls where private gardens adjoin roads and close boarded timber fencing elsewhere, which is considered acceptable in terms of visual amenity. In conclusion, in terms of visual amenity, clearly the proposal would have the impact on the landscape character of the area, but it's not considered that this would be significant. 
The built development would partly be seen in context to the existing residential development and the industrial estate to the west. Views from the public footpaths to the northern part of the site would be of open space with residential properties beyond. Additionally, the site is part of an allocated site within the adopted borough plan. Turning to residential amenity, a noise assessment has been submitted with the application. This has involved carrying out noise measurements at a number of locations along the westernmost part of the site. The most obvious noise source in the area is Coventry and Eaton Railway, which runs mostly along the on an embankment parallel to the western site boundary. This is used by passenger trains and some freight trains. The assessment found that where the trains pass on the bank embankment, the resulting noise exposure levels were acceptable on the development, even allowing for a planned increase in passenger services. The railway embankment provides significant significant acoustic screening of any industrial noise such as noise from vehicle movements and vehicle loading unloading from the commercial premises on the other side of the railway at Baton Road Industrial Estate. The council's environmental health team have no object objection and requested a condition for a noise attenuation scheme including glazing, ventilation, orientation and boundary treatment details uh, in relation to the sorry, and treatment details. In relation to the existing properties, distance standards are met in compliance with the Council's Sustainable Design and Construction SBD 2020. Within the site, the distance standards are generally met. However, Plot 92 has detached garages on both site boundaries, which can lead to the creation of a sense of enclosure. Nevertheless, the garages are staggered, which reduces the impact on that plot. You can see that in front of you on the slide. There is also an element of buyer beware. Plots 45 and 46, which is at the bottom of the screen, each have a bedroom window that face the blank wall of plot 31 at a distance of approximately 9 metres, where distance standards would normally require 12 and 14 metres. However, these rooms are shown to be served by an angled window, which means that the views are beyond plot 31, which results in a reasonable standard of amenity. In terms of highway safety, access is proposed off Stockley Road, Sefton Drive, and the position of the access is in accordance with policy HSG 12 and the concept plan SBD. The entrance to the site at the junction with Sefton Drive would take the form of a junction inside the site boundaries, linking to Stockley Road and the two new primary routes into the site. The character of the primary rows is marked visually by the boulevard treatment with verges and tree planting. Secondary roads are short cul de sacs, clearly differentiated from the main routes. The mews and private drives would be denoted by alternative road surface materials or banding to clearly differentiate their hierarchy and their use as shared surfaces. Rochester County Council highways have no objection to the proposed layout subject to the conditions. In terms of parking provision, one space per dwelling is provided for each one bedroom property, two spaces for each two bedroom property, two spaces for each smaller three bedroom property and two spaces plus a single garage for each three and four bedroom properties. The council does not have any safe car parking standards and this level of provision is considered acceptable. In addition, 18 spaces are proposed to serve the community building. A transport statement of common ground between the agent's transport consultant and Warwickshire County Council Highways was submitted as part of the borough plan process. This detailed how highway impacts were considered and also inc incorporated a detailed transport assessment that assessed both highway cap capacity and barrier downtime, downtime impacts at the level crossing at Black Horse Road. Prior to the rerunning of the modelling, advice was sought from both Network Rail and Rochester County Council Public Transport as to the future of the level crossing in terms of barrier downtime, resultant of the knuckle phase two. Detailed rail survey was also undertaken, which advised that by 2031, there could be an increase in the barrier downtime from 12 minutes to 17 and a half minutes per hour. This was cons considered acceptable. 
This statement of common ground and agreed that the inclusion of the application site and the revised barrier downtime information would still mean that any local highway network operated within capacity. Warwickshire County Council Highways agreed that impacts to the Black Horse Road level crossing and wider vehicular impacts from the development could be mitigated and were not severe. There was detailed discussion at the examination and a hearing on HSG 12 for the borough plan and ultimately the inspector concluded that there were no reasons why the site should not be allocated having regard to all the evidence submitted. Transport assessment has been submitted with this application. This details the modelling that has been undertaken to assess the traffic impact of the development on the local and strategic highway network. This has included assessments of the level crossing on Black Horse Road, the Black Horse Road traffic signal junction, the Longford Road Oakmore Road junction, the School Lane Country Road junction, the Longford Road corridor and junction three of the M6. In relation to Junction 3 of the M6, Highways England had concerns that the cumulative impact of this application and allocated growth within the adopted local plans would have an impact on the safe and efficient operation of M6 Junction 3 and the M6 mainline. This concern focused on the M6 southbound, southbound off-slip where the cumulative impact would result in queuing on the slip road and back onto the M6 main line in future year assessments. This raised significant safety concerns which required mitigation. To identify a solution, the Highways Agency, Warwickshire County Council Highways and Coventry City Council Highways have worked together to resolve the issue. Consequently, a scheme known as the M6 Junction 3 Interim Scheme has, to be de has been developed by Warwickshire County Council and will signalise the B4113 arm of the junction and provide widening of that, that approach as well as additional stacking capacity. The mitigation scheme has been tested within the Nuneaton and Bedworth Ceramics model and a junction impact model. Based on Highways England assessment and appraisal of the modelling and associated outputs, it has been demonstrated that the scheme would mitigate the operation, operational and safety concerns identified by Highways England. The scheme would be delivered by Warwickshire County Council no later than 2026. To enable the scheme to come forward and be implemented, Section 106 contributions will be requested from developments in the area and allocations which have a primary or secondary impact upon the junction based on the modelling outputs. The contribution is currently being calculated by Warwickshire County Council Highways based on the impact of this development. The, application, the applicant has agreed in principle to pay a contribution. Highways England have no objections subject to conditions and 106 contributions. Warwickshire County Council Highways have also requested highway capacity improvements along the Hawkesbury Longford Road corridor, including the provision of a cycle and junction mitigation schemes at the Baton Road Industrial Estate Access, Black Horse Road Junction, Longford Road Roundabout and Carriageway Widening and a cycle route to connect the development site to existing infrastructure. These 106 contributions are currently being calculated by uh, Warwickshire County Council Highways based on the impact of the development. The applicant has agreed in principle to pay this contribution. Following questions asked by members at the last committee, the addendum provides a full response from Warwickshire County Council Highways to points raised and which are, I will pray see now, um, appreciating I'm sorry that you got the addendum a little late. Right. Number one, in reference to the response to the traffic survey drone footage undertaken by Hawkesbury Village Action Group, in relation to the drone footage, transport planning are unable to make any meaningful comment on the drone footage because there is no evidence of time and when, by whom, and in what circumstances it was filmed and whether it complies with applicable law. Therefore, no meaningful comparison can be made to existing data held by Warwickshire County Council. It would also appear that data protection rights, including privacy legislation as required for that type of work, may not have been done in this case. Reference to the level crossing. 
data has already been captured within the model using survey traffic flow supported by automatic tra uh, traffic count data for the present and future forecast use using information supplied by the railway authorities. Sample counts. The traffic counts provided uh, by the Residents Association have been collected on three days in January and February 2020 and considered not to be neutral months for undertaking surveys. Such counts should be conduct conducted over a period of one to two weeks during an, a neutral period or corroborated using automatic traffic count data over a similar period in order to obtain realistic averages. The time periods used appear to have no specific correlation with the peak hour and are samples with the standard 8 to 9 peak. Labelling is unclear for the specific count location and infers, infers changeover of enumerators. They state the sample counts undertaken uh, was a handwritten tally with no supporting video evidence. No details have been supplied about the enumerators and Warwickshire County Council would not use local enumerators due to concerns over bias. All surveys should be based on video analysis or automatic traffic counts which provide a clear audible trail. Worcestershire County Council undertake videoed manual classified count traffic surveys using third party survey companies to ensure accurate and independent counts. No inf information in relation to checks on their network in terms of any major traffic ma management events has been provided in the counts. The volumes recorded on the local roads are without context and on a single survey point and do not highlight existing issues or the potential for future issues. They are simply a record of flows on these roads on this simple single day for a short duration and do not match the local peak hour period. No survey counts have been collected at the key junctions and no supporting surveys provided to define the current network conditions, e.g. speed, queue or journey time surveys. Without such empirical data, it's not possible to determine the effect of future increases on the conditions and the operations of the junctions. They state it's essential to understand the turning movements at a junction if a capacity assessment is to be undertaken to understand how the network operates as a whole. Simply undertaking traffic counts does not provide an assessment of traffic impacts. It does not identify and uh, assess the effects of the estimated additional traffic. No con consideration has been given to the capacity of the roads or the key junctions on the network and no attempt to define and compare future traffic conditions. Finally, there's no analysis of the future network and demands would operate inclusive of local planned traffic and sustainable traffic mitigation schemes, which has been captured within the local plan modelling undertaken by county. In terms of their response on the extent and acceptability of the proposed unadopted highways, the scheme was considered acceptable. The proposal was supported by drawings showing the areas offered for adoption and supported by a stage one road safety audit and all considered by county highways, which led to their no objection and this still stands. The shared surfaces are not part of the adoptable areas. They are not designed to have separate pedestrian areas all the streets to be adopted do have separate footpaths. Their response on the acceptability of the proposed vehicular access that members had concerns about. Rochester County Council Highway state the access arrangements revision submitted November 2020 have been fully assessed and safety audited. The Highway Authority reiterates they consider access suitable for this phase and quantum of development. A secondary access would be required for further phases. Uh, highways response that community of assessment of highways impacts was thoroughly carried out. They state the developer has undertaken modelling to reflect 2021 and 2031 conditions applying background, background growth. These scenarios were requested by Rewatcher County Council to understand the impact of the development in isolation and to calculate appropriate contributions. The modelling is considered robust. Full assessment of the community of local plan impacts was undertaken to support local plan inclusions. 
Warwickshire County Council are currently developing schemes for the Longford Corridor Base upon the most recent planning assumptions for committed and allocated sites in the area and will be provided via developer contributions. The impact of this development and other developments in the area have been fully assessed through multiple iteration of both standalone with growth and community assessments, including all local plan sites. Warwick County Council has satisfied the, satisfied the required scenarios have been assessed and the impacts can be mitigated. Their response on the acceptability of the proposal being delivered in advance of infrastructure they state it would not be acceptable for the site to be fully built out prior to the delivery of mitigation schemes. So there are trigger points analysis to determine when certain infrastructure is required. This is not an isolated issue and there are always issues in relation to forward funding of infrastructure by developers. The modelling undertaken for this specific application considers more than the number of dwellings to be delivered in the current phase and is considered robust. The impact of the pandemic will have a significant impact on growth for both Nuneaton Council and Bedworth Borough Council and Coventry City Council housing trajectory and may allow some additional time prior to the requirement for the delivery of the schemes. In terms of the trigger point analysis for contributions, it's recommended for the local, local mit mitigation corridor. Planning approval should not be delayed as planning conditions requiring this assessment and triggers for delivery of schemes, payment of contributions is acceptable. Especially so as Warwickshire County Council are now finalising the mitigation strategy for the corridor. Carrying this out earlier would have resulted in correct scheme assumptions and would not reflect the most recent changes in terms of approved housing numbers in this area. The addendum actually provides um, a, a response to that from, let me just go down to it, from Hawkesbury Village Residents Association. Um, I can go through that at members request if you ask at the end, uh, but I understand that was actually uh, forwarded to all members anyway. The MPPF outlines the need for planning to promote walking, cycling and public transport and to make the fullest possible use of these. There are three public footpaths which currently cross the whole allocated site of HSG 12, which provide links between Hawkesbury and Bedworth. Public footpath B36 is within this allocation site and runs along the western site boundary parallel to the railway and adjacent to the southwestern boundary. A range of schemes are proposed which would improve accessibility to and from the site by sustainable forms of transport and therefore reduce the reliance on the private car. A series of footpaths and cycleways are proposed within the site which would link into the existing highway network. These generally run north, south and east, west and provide key links to and through the proposed open space and link through to the northern part of the site through to the Miners Welfare Park and Bedworth Town Centre beyond and through to Baton Road. The future application for the rest of the site will also have a connection to the National Cycle Route 52. Cycle path links are also proposed to the allotments and community buildings and the council's parks team have no objection to the proposals. The concept plan SPD identifies a bridge crossing uh, containing pedestrian and cycle routes over the retained central pool, which you can see on the bottom of the slide, which would which would run from north to south. However, the plans submitted do not propose a bridge and instead propose the footpaths and cycleways around the pool. The concept plan SPD provides guidance on the delivery of the development principles for the site and are intended to provide a visual representation of policy requirements as well as other key elements and so are conceptual in, nat in nature. They are not intended to be exhaustive or show all required elements. The SPD does state that alternative solutions and land use arrangements may come forward as part of the planning application process. The agent has submitted supporting information for not including this bridge. In terms of ecology, the pond and area around it would be a valuable wildlife site. 
Following discussions with the council's parks, it was agreed to enable some pedestrian access at a viewing area on the south side, but to deter pedestrian intrusion around the rest of the pond by pulling the proposed foot and cycle path away from the pond. A bridge across the pond would result in people encroaching nearer and over the pond, which would inevitably threaten the wildlife habitat. The agent also states that the proposed foot psychopath would allow level access around the pond for all users, including the less able and parents with buggies, and all would have views of the pond without encroaching too close and therefore protecting the wildlife. They state that even a ramp bridge would not be suitable for all users. The agent has also pointed out that the proposed landscaping scheme has been carefully drawn up in liaison with officers and it's considered that a footbridge is an unsuitable feature in this wildlife habitat setting. It's also considered that the footbridge will detract from the nearby canal foot cycle bridge that will come forward in, uh, due to the master plan. Officers consider that these are sufficient reasons and given that footpaths are provided around the central pool and still provide suitable links, it is not considered that the emission of the bridge is significant. Users would still be able to travel north and south circling the pool. It could also be argued that the emission of the bridge is marginally better in wildlife terms to not have people crossing a bridge across the centre of the pool. The Council's planning policy have confirmed they are satisfied with the justification provided by the agent. A viewing area is proposed at the central pool, which parks have no objection to, uh, subject to further details of the fencing around it and the position of benches, which can be covered by condition. The site is in close proximity to bus route 78 and 78A and the nearest bus stops are on Black Horse Road. The scheme also provides the opportunity for a circular bus route through the site. Policy TC3 of the borough plan states that any new residential development should be within 1.2 uh, kilometres of walking distance of a district or local centre. The site is 1.15 uh, kilometres from the local centre at Coventry Road School Lane, which therefore meets this requirement. This policy also states that a new residential development should be eight minutes motor vehicle drive to a district centre, should be at, at, at most eight minutes, I should say. The nearest district centre within the borough is Balkington, and this is approximately nine minutes drive away. The site is also approximately seven to eight minutes drive from Bedworth Town Centre. In addition, Arena Park Shopping Centre, which is allocated as a major district centre in Coventry City Council's local plan, is approximately eight to nine minutes drive away from the site. In addition to the residential development on the site, a number of other uses are proposed in accordance with the requirement, requirements of policy HSG 12 and the concept plan. These include a community building that will provide a flexible space that can be used for a range of uses that may include in part retail or cafe use. This is to be sited to the southwest of the site, which means it's well lo located to serve the new development and existing residents. This is to be a single storey building and provide approximately 185 square metres of floor space. A condition has been added requiring details of the long term management and maintenance of this building and used to be submitted and details regarding the management company provisions to be included within the 106 agreement. To the northwest of the community building, an area of land is designated as allotments with facilities such as communal building and composting area. The Council's Parks team have requested that full details of the allotment building are submitted, which, which has been co co covered by Condition 25. A community orchard is also proposed between the allotments and the community building. As with the community building, the long-term management of the allotments and orchard can be dealt with through conditions and a 106 legal agreement. Council's Parks team have requested that details of a planting plan for the orchard are submitted, which has been included as condition 31. The application proposes both formal and informal public spaces, and the location of this has been influenced by existing features of the site. 
The open space provided on this application site will tie into the wider site as illustrated on the submitted master plan and in accordance with the requirements of policy HSG 12 and the concept plan. In terms of the formal, formal open space, an area for BMX track is provided as part of this application and a condition can be added for its detailed design. This will form part of the future community part to the northern part of the allocation, but ensures some facilities are available for residents of this part of the site. Health and Safety Executive have commented that the proposed BMX track is within the inner, middle and consultation zones of the site previously operated by Puma Energy, which is a major hazard site that's in Baton Road and it's, there's an application currently under for its demolition there. They would object if it were located within the inner zone for this, but would find it acceptable in the middle zone, but has suggested a condition that restricts its use to no more than 100 people. The location of the BMX site is indicative only, and the agent has confirmed that it only needs to be pulled in slightly to take it out of this inner zone and fully into the middle zone. And condition has been added requiring full details of the BMX track, including sighting of the track, including areas for queuing and spectating, details of its size, which should be no more than 300 metres in length, and landscaping to provide it around the edges and within the track. The design of the track should limit the number of people that can use it at any one time. A further condition has also been added, which prevents it being used by any club, being in association with the track and for any organised competitive use. Towards the south, a local park is provided. This will include a multiplay tower, swing, seesaw, activity area and a toddler multiplay area. Council's Parks team have stated that they have full general support for the application and believe it will be of a high quality development and an attractive place to live. In relation to flooding and drainage, the MPPF requires that consideration is given to the potential impact on flooding on new development, whilst also ensuring the flood risk is not increased elsewhere as a result of it and sets out a sequential risk-based approach to the location of development. The site is within flood zone one and therefore has a low level of fluvial flood risk. In terms of surface water drainage, there is some evidence that the southwest of the site becomes waterlogged. It's estimated that approximately seven hectares of the site drains towards the southwest corner and with no obvious outfall, it is assumed drainage is ultimately achieved through a, combina a combination of infiltration both to ground and into the public sewerage and evapotranspiration. The proposed surface water drainage strategy makes use of existing site features, including the central water course and ponds, and a series of additional sustainable drainage systems are proposed throughout the site to manage surface water drainage. Warwickshire County Council Flood Risk Management have no objection, subjects to conditions. In terms of contamination and ground stability, a geo-environmental assessment has submitted, been submitted with the application. Due to the site's coal mining history, a significant amount of preparatory work has been undertaken to understand the ground conditions on the site area. The geo-environmental assessment includes a coal mining report from the Coal Authority, which according to its record confirms that within 20 metres of the site, there are four mine entries. The information was supplemented by further research which confirmed that 18 shafts have been recorded and eight have been backfilled. Site works undertaken in summer 2019 comprised trial pitting, deep drilling and rotary drilling together with coal mine shaft probing and monitoring visits. Exploratory holes were located across the site to provide geotechnical parameters for the proposed new development and adjacent to potential sources identified from the death study and to determine the location and depth of the coal workings and mine shafts. All 18 coal shafts identified in the death study were probed with the exception of three, which were centred in the ponds on the site. However, these have still been probed around the outside of the existing ponds. Of the nine shafts which were encountered, only one was capped. The Coal Authority have confirmed that they are satisfied that a thorough assessment of former coal mining activity informed by the intrusive ground investigations has been undertaken for the application and note that the site layout has been informed by the presence of these mine entries.
They have no objection subject to a condition covering submission of an approved scheme of treatment works for the mine entries on site and implement implementation of those remedial works. In terms of Contamination, the geo-environmental assessment identified elevated levels of contaminants and ground gases and subsequent proposes remediation. Council's environmental health team have no objection subject to the imposition of the standard contaminated land conditions. In relation to air quality, an air quality impact assessment has been submitted with the application. This assessment considers the impacts associated with the full allocated site of 500 homes and not just this current application in order to take into account the cumulative impacts of both schemes. It also takes into account other committed developments in the area. The site is close to an air quality management area declared by Comtry City Council for exceedances of the annual mean nitrogen dioxide objective. Development will lead to changes in vehicle flows on local roads, which may impact on air quality at existing residential properties. The new residential properties may also be subject to the impacts of emissions from the adjacent road and railway network. The assessment finds that concentrations of nitrogen dioxide and particulate matter will remain below the re relevant objectives at all receptors with or without the proposed development. The impacts of local road traffic and railway emissions on the air quality for residents living in the proposed developments have been shown to be acceptable at the worst case locations assessed, with concentrations being well below the air quality objectives. In relation to construction works, having the potential to create dust during construction, it will therefore be necessary to apply a package of mitigation measures to minimise dust emissions. With these measures in place, it is expected that any residential effects will not be significant. The Council's Environmental Health are satisfied with the findings of the assessment and have no objections subject to conditions covering a dust management plan, provision of electric vehicle charging points and that all gas fire boiler installations should be to a specified standard. In terms of ecology, uh, an ecological assessment and an arboricultural assessment has been submitted with the application. Habitat and species surveys have been undertaken for the whole allocation area and confirms that the entire site is not subject to any statutory ecological des uh, designations. Series of habitats and species surveys were commissioned, including badger, water vole, otter, reptiles, bats and great crested newts. A walkover field survey was undertaken to assess the habitats and flora of the site, which noted semi-improved grassland, tree groups and scattered trees, dense scrub and tall ruderal. Other potential ecological habitats include four ponds and a drainage ditch. The species surveys indicate that there was no evidence of badger, water vole, otter or reptiles. A barn owl and a kingfisher was observed during site visits. Bat survey surveys identify the presence of different bat species foraging or commuting around the site. The majority of bat activity was noted to be in association with the central and northern ponds and eastern boundary canal corridor the western boundary scrub and grassland to the east and south of the site. A tree survey indicated that five had low bat roosting potential and one with moderate bat roosting potential. A total of 28 water bodies was ident identified within 500 metres of the development site boundary and seven were assessed for their suitability to support breeding great crested newts. The pond to the east was identified as having a small great crested newt population. The report makes a number of recommendations for biodiversity mitigation and enhancement measures, which includes the installation of bat, bird and barn owl boxes and native tree and scrub planting. The northern part of the site, which will be retained as natural open space, will assist it in boosting the biodiversity of the site. In order to comply with the MPPF to ensure that development does not have a negative impact on biodiversity, biodiversity impact calculations have been carried out. Biodiversity is always treated in a sequential test with avoidance being the preferred method methodology followed by mitigation first on-site and then off-site. Cal calculations show a net gain in biodiversity. The net gain does rely on a significant contribution coming from reed bed creation in the two retained ponds, but this planting 
is dependent on the depth of the ponds. Details have not been submitted and therefore the council's parks have requested a condition that further details are submitted. These findings would inform a detailed planting plan. In relation to archaeology, an archaeological assessment has been submitted with the application and has concluded that there are potential remains of buildings and industrial structures which are of local importance on the site. These features include two canal basins which were used to load coal from nearby coal pits onto barges on, on the country canal. Other buildings associated with the Neaton's important industrial heritage would have been present in the area and could include warehouses and other ancillary structures. While it is probable that archaeological deposits, deposits sorry, may have been destroyed or truncated across parts of the site, there remains a potential for previously unknown archaeological deposit predating the medieval and later agricultural use of the site. Any such features are likely to be impacted upon by the proposed development. Therefore, Warwickshire County Council archaeology have been consulted and have suggested a condition that requires further work to be carried out. In relation to planning obligations, a number of contributions have been requested as detailed on the screen, including education, play and open space, highways mitigation, healthcare, sports provision and police infrastructure. The applicant has agreed to these contributions. Following deferral, Watch County Council Education have responded, which is on your uh, addendum, uh, to advise that the 106 contributions would be split. Approximately 138,000 towards the increase of early years preschool provision within two miles of the development, over 704,000 towards additional secondary and post 16 provision at Ash Green School, and over 59,000 for additional primary, secondary, post 16 learning, special educational needs, learning support facilities in the area. They have advised they are not seeking uh, financial contributions in respect of primary school places. For information, there are nine primary schools within a two mile walking route of the site. Guidelines state that for primary schools, they should be within two miles walking radius and for secondary schools within three miles radius. The exist existing schools are forecast to have sufficient capacity to meet the need. This includes increased capacity at Newdigate Primary School, which has expanded from one and a half to two forms of entry, creating an additional 105 spaces across the school over a seven year period. Within two miles walking route, there are All Saints, the Canons, St Francis Catholic Primary, St Michael's Primary, Exel Cedars Infant, which is 1.18 metres 1.18 miles away, which is the nearest infant school. Exhall St Giles Junior, which is the closest junior school. Newdigate Primary School, Raceley's Infant, Raceley's Junior and Goodyear's End Primary. In addition, Warwick Education have clarified that students would not have to go to a Warwickshire school. People can apply for a place at any school and their admission will be determined against the school admissions criteria. So in other words, they could go to Coventry City Council School. Usually those children living in closest to a school will take priority over those living further away. For example, with faith schools, then people might be asked for evidence that they actively practice the faith. In conclusion, the site is allocated as a strategic housing site in the borough plan and is a deliverable housing site and would provide social and leisure facilities. The potential impacts of the proposed development in relation to the use of the land, the residential amenity, visual amenity, highway safety, flood risk, drainage, contamination, ecology and heritage and archaeology have all been considered. The assessment has subsequently shown that there would be no adverse impacts in some instances. However, where potential adverse impacts are identified, it would be possible to mitigate against these through it, sorry, it would be possible to mitigate against these through the use of planning obligations and conditions. The recommendation, therefore, is one of approval subject to conditions and the completion of a legal, legal agreement. Thank you, Chair. Sorry for the length. OK, thank you, Jackie. Just while you're getting your breath back, uh, I'm 
just going to ask Ashley Baldwin or anybody from the county highways if they wanted to take uh, this opportunity to say anything during the presentation or whether you're just happy to take questions as they arise. Chair, can I um, just add a, a couple of very brief points if that's okay? Yeah, we don't want to go on for an hour. Thanks, Ash. <laughs> um, yeah, so Jackie's covered this in detail, but I think it's useful if I summarise uh, a few points. Uh, and I'm just conscious of the discussion that was undertaken at the previous committee. Um, so the application site is uh, an adopted strategic allocation. And what the committee have to assess is a partial element of the total of the quantum uh, of planned development in this location. Um, so, so that the application sits within the uh, strategic allocation in the borough plan, uh, which has been adopted by full council and therefore members of the committee must take this into account in determining the application. At the previous committee, there was quite a bit of discussion on highways and education, and I won't rerun uh, through the detail that Jackie's just, just ran through, but I think it's important to note that um, we're still in a position where there's no objection from uh, the County Council um, in either respect. Um, there's been detailed work undertaken at the plan making stage uh, and then further technical work at this application stage which has helped uh, County Council form their view and obviously the recommendation that's now in front of the committee um, and it's within this context that the planning committee uh, have to make their decision. I'll, I'll leave it there Chair, I'm conscious that you've um, absorbed quite a bit of detail there. Okay, uh, thanks Ashley. Um, right, if I can move on to the speakers and then just a reminder it's three minutes according to constitution followed by any points of clarification there might be so um could i ask mr jonathan adams please good evening my name is john adams and i'm a Teller king planning and i'm the planning agent for terra strategic the application is for 204 dwellings and community uses in the west part of the Hawkesbury Golf Course site, which is allocated in the borough plan for at least 380 dwellings. The proposed layout is very similar to the illustrative SPD concept plan regarding the access and distribution of development, and therefore it complies with the borough plan. An outline application for the wider site will be submitted later this year and will of course be considered by this committee. We have held regular detailed discussions with officers and key stakeholders long before and during this application process with all officers supporting this application and with the Borough Council Parks team stating that this application will lead to a high quality development and an attractive place to live. The application scheme will deliver many community benefits, including 51, that's 25 percent affordable homes, um, which is with a compliant policy compliant mix and agreed distribution, community building, allotments, community orchard, large areas of formal and informal open space, a BMX track that will form part of the community park, a local park, including children's play equipment, Habitat enhancements, including the retention and creation of ponds, new native tree planting and retention of the northern area as natural open space. Biodiversity net gain, new and enhanced footpaths and cycle paths. Over 1.8 million pounds of Section 106 contributions towards education, highways, healthcare and infrastructure improvements, including highway capacity improvements and new cycle routes to enhance... Yeah. The site's connectivity. The site is in a sustainable location with good access to Bedworth by foot, bicycle and bus. It's nearer to Bedworth than any of the other allocated sites are to either Bedworth or Nuneaton. The application is supported by Warwickshire and Coventry Highway Authorities and Highways England. The Highway Authorities support the road safety audit which shows that the proposed access and site layout is acceptable including the use of shared surface streets and the extent of adopted and unadopted roads proposed, with any unadopted roads to be maintained in perpetuity by a well-funded management company. 
Highway officers have analysed the detailed traffic analysis that makes provision for both this site and all other allocated sites in the borough and Coventry, and they support the proposal. I therefore, respectfully request that you resolve to approve this application. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any points of clarification? No. Okay. Um, Councillor Brown. Councillor Brown. He's on the list, but can't, can't I think he's having IT issues, Chair. He's just messaged to say that Teams isn't letting him unmute or put his video on. Um, oh. Can you message him to ask him to try leaving the meeting and rejoining? That might help. Can, can you do that? Emailing. Okay. Yes, I'm just messaging now. Okay, thank you. And what I'll do, I know it's not normal practice, but I'll come back to him and I'll, I'll move on with the speakers. Um, Nicola, Be oh. Wahida, do you have a letter to read out from Nicola Betts? Hi, Chair. Yes, I do. Okay. Um, I have a statement from Hawkesbury Village Action Group. Um, please understand that Although this statement is being read as from one local resident, this truly is highlighting the concerns of 831 residents that formally signed the petition. Many um, attended public consultation. Hawkesbury has unique features of being on county council boundaries plus two exits via a weak humpback bridge or via the railway crossing. This development is proposed to be a single exit development with boundaries of railway line and the, the canal. Fundamental facts and are incorrect within the original application being local schools and traffic flow. Despite the developers changing their plans and resubmitting frequently, this is never addressed, which is still a concern. That is a phrased development in all but name. The the on transport transport modelling we believe has been used to remove the previous WCC highway changing their position from objection to support the development and not independently analysing the traffic flow model despite requests from HVRA WCC highway has declined meetings. The application and the transport assessment modelling via Entran on behalf of Terra Strategic. Both have quoted low facility of schools as the crow flies, making the conclusion that these are within a short walking distance. This is incorrect as these schools are not within the catchment area. If the model had used the correct schools for WCC, this would have had an impact on the conclusion that traffic exits from the south as the schools are to the north exit i.e railway line page seven trip distribution it should also be noted that the core data within the modeling is from 2017 the entrant transport modeling report does not appear to reflect the downtime of the railway crossing with the coventry and Nuneaton railway upgrade known locally as the knuckle phase one will allow the service frequency to double. This will increase the barrier downtime. As villagers, we do not have the financial support of the developers to have our own modelling with the correct data to highlight the correct flow of our school and rush hour traffic. We did hold a traffic survey with drone footage. We found during peak hours, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m., approximately 400 vehicles with 15 pedestrians went out at the level crossing and approximately 160 65 vehicles with only four pedestrians entering the village. However, WCC have now dismissed our data as not within their format. How are the local residents meant to have an impact? 
or, or challenge when they see clear flaws within reports and questions, the directions of traffic flow. Okay, Chair, there's there's two small paragraphs left. Do you, would you like me to complete or? Yeah, okay. as long as they're only small, we're not going to take one. Yeah. No, they're not going to take too long, Chair. Um, with the traffic flow out of the village via Black Horse Road, this then leads to question the impact of other local areas like the M6 Junction 3, questions air quality from standing traffic. Also, there are no immediate plans for infrastructure to allow a potential 500 plus cars to flow out of the village. We are an area that has already seen growth within Hawkesbury Manor development and further within planning and as a village, 82 houses with planning permission against to this to this site. That's the end of the statement, Chair. OK, thank you, Wahida. Um, Councillor Brown, do we have you back? I think so, Chair. Can you hear me? I can hear you fine now, thank you. Time will start when you do, Councillor. OK. Um, th this is a, a, a Trojan horse of a development in that we are being asked to approve a small number of properties that will subsequently be part of a much larger development. And it's a development that uh, might otherwise be acceptable, but the site is so poor, we end up with a single access site with hundreds of houses that has to uh, get out of the village over what is essentially a compromised single access. Um, We've had uh, a deferral on this application for um, more information about traffic. And I, I understood that we were going to have it on schools as well, but we, we, we only seem to have traffic on the agenda. Um, and we've heard a lot of technobabble really about um, dismissing the residents' traffic survey as if they're able to produce a, a professional survey. I mean, the inconvenient truth of the resident survey is that traffic will be severely compromised. Um, and the, the our council has had this traffic survey for months, yet we only hear of the objections to, that uh, dismiss it as being authoritative at this juncture at this deferred meeting and we actually receive it in an addendum which arrives a minute or so before the meeting's due to start and yet we're supposed to be able to give it you know, a comprehensive assessment and uh, be able to make a decision based on it. Surely if we've had this survey from the residents for months these questions could have been asked and they could have provided uh, a, a assurance or further information you know, if the developer had provided an inadequate uh, traffic survey, no doubt we would have, they would have been in a position where they would have been allowed to do that. Um, so I, I think we've been asked to make a decision here, having given the residents a very poor uh, show really. We've had information from them, we've sat on it, and we're now at this very late juncture raising objections as to why their traffic survey it w wasn't acceptable to us, yet it actually uh, confirms what we all know from living around here, that there are massive delays on the road that leads into and out of this site. And we've heard about traffic mitigation schemes that are going to come in the future in 2026 for the um, junction with uh, with uh, Coventry Road and we hear 2031 now being proposed for the improvements to the Coventry Road, Baton Road uh, junction. Um, so residents that move into this estate will be compromised in getting in and out of it for a decade. That's the actual truth of it. You know, it, it, it even if the, 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 the proposed improvements do come at that stage. We've then got a situation where the, there's, there's going to be no school provision for this extra development within the village. The, and it doesn't matter how much money you contribute, it doesn't help kids get to school. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Thank you. Thank you. Um, are there any points of clarification? No. OK, we can go on to Chris Young. Good evening, Chair. Could I just check that you can hear me OK? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. My name is uh, Chris Young. I'm Queen's Council and I act uh, for Terra Strategic. I'm uh, strongly of the opinion that they should follow their officers' advice and resolve to approve this application for the following reasons. One, 
In 2012, this council refused an application for 200 dwellings at the site, principally on highway grounds. Despite the highway authority having no objection, the planning inspector and the secretary of state both considered the subsequent planning appeal and determined that the 200 dwellings would not harm the highway network. During preparation of the borough plan, the applicants and highway engineers worked closely with Warwickshire to prepare detailed traffic studies and models assessing the cumulative impact of both this site and other committed developments in Coventry and Nuneaton and Bedworth upon the surrounding highway network and the level crossing. The work enabled the Highway Authority to sign a transport statement of common ground, confirming that the site can accommodate at least 380 dwellings. Following adoption of the borough plan and the site's allocation for at least 380 dwellings, the applicants, highway engineers, again worked with Warwickshire's own traffic models to demonstrate that this application will not have an unacceptable impact on the surrounding highway network. An independent road safety audit also identifies that the site's access and internal layout are acceptable. Warwickshire and Coventry Highway Authorities, along with Highways England, therefore support this application for 204 dwellings. The application broadly uh, corresponds with the illustrative SPD concept plan regarding the distribution and quantum of development and therefore complies with the borough plan. All officers support the proposal, including housing, highways, policy, education and your planning officers. This application also delivers a significant community benefit, including allotments, a community orchard and public parks, a community building, a contribution towards education, health care and highways infrastructure. The site's allocation for at least 380 dwellings means the application for far fewer, fewer dwellings, this application, is in compliance with the borough plan and consequently there are no reasonable reasons to refuse this application. I'm mindful that when members refused the last application at this site in 2012 for 200 homes, principally on highway grounds, despite no objection from the Highway Authority, the Secretary of State at appeal awarded full costs against the council, which amounted to £152,000. That was when the site was in the green belt and before it was allocated for at least 380 dwellings in the borough. Any subsequent appeal would, of course, incur much more significant costs, not just the highway costs. I'm strongly of the opinion that members should resolve to grant the application. And if it does not, uh, a planning inspector will, in my opinion, um, award costs against the council. I'm very grateful uh, uh, and uh, for you being able to listen to me. Can I just take what, what two points, though, that were raised, if I may? Thank you, Mr Young. Thank Can you, I just Mr. take those two points? I can't. I'm sticking to the three minutes. Thank you. OK, well, I, all I would say is that... Um, are, there any, are there any points of... Oh, I'm so sorry. Just in case you didn't hear me, are there any points of clarification? No. OK. Uh, Councillor Glass. Yeah, thank you. That's um, that's interesting, isn't it? There's uh, we're getting a wee bit of history of there. What what this planning committee did in the past, and what price the borough council actually paid in order to defend uh, the people in Hawkesbury. Interesting to see that. That might happen again, or was the threat sort of was the was the threat there that I never seen, or perhaps I, I didn't hear, but uh, I understand that that's the thing. Let's get this right. So, as the only reason that this was put into the borough plan was because the inspector himself put it into the borough plan. There was no intention of putting this site into the borough plan. It was the inspector that did it. And then all of a sudden we had this rush about trying to consult people and try to do this. I always remember the words from Councillor Lloyd saying to the developer, if there was um, problems with the, the road traffic, would you be sitting in front of us now? And the answer was, no, he wouldn't be sitting in front of us. I always remember that. And I'm willing to accept there's got to be development dead here, there, and at a proper mitigated things in order to help help the locals. All of a sudden, the HRVA, which have been very positive, they're not NIMBYs, they've tried to do the best for, for the village and everything is concerned. Now we can find out that their children can go to Coventry schools. Wow. Or even to Newdigate. Wow, you've got to pass 
at least two junior schools before you get to Newdigate. That's very good. There is no um, the, uh, Coventry Road itself. In order to cross the road to try and get to Ash Green or anywhere else, there's no pedestrian refuges. There's no buttons where pedestrians can cross, never mind kids. And what we're going to turn around and possibly say is that all these extra houses with all the extra cars that's going, never mind the the, the bridge that's weak at the on one side of the, the village, that, that'll be a rat run. The other place is going to be stymied with lorries going in and out. And we've been told that another seven minutes or is it another five minutes will be added to the barriers going down. I've actually stood there and clicked and seen how long those barriers are down. It's going to be... I was hoping that the county would come up with something a bit more positive in order to mitigate the traffic that's gone along this road. And um, I'm sorry to say, Chair, that... Uh, I haven't seen it. And unfortunately, with the officer's advice, et cetera, et cetera, I think it'll be very hard for us to turn around and try and change what's happening. But it's such a shame that such a positive group, such a positive group is okay, getting its, its nose rubbed at it. Thank you. Are there any points of clarification? No. OK, in which case, and uh, clearly officers will have, uh, have some points to come back on, but uh, to enable debate to take place, can I move the recommendation, uh, which is to grant planning permission subject to a legal agreement and the conditions printed? Is that seconded? I'll second that, Chair. Councillor Phillips. Thank you. Any member? Councillor Pander. Chat. Thank you, Chair. Uh, you can hear me properly? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. And uh, uh, I was just saying, said before, for so many times, so there will be more than 1,000 houses uh, built in, cover in this side plus uh, so many houses on the other side of the road. And Black House Road is already congested as cars are parked on pavement to a low flow of traffic, but problems to wheelchair users, mobility scooters and guide dog users as they can't pass through. On the corner of Black House Road and Iron Bridge, there is a sign, not suitable for heavy goods vehicles. How the construction lorry will pass through Black House Road on this corner. And Black House Road from railway crossing up to Longford Road has one side payment, which is not wide enough so that pushchairs or mobility scooters from opposite direction pass through safely. So someone has to come on the main road, which is not safe. I request the WCC officer to clarify the safe width of payment should be when opposite side pushchairs or mobility scooter will pass through safely. And the next is a lack of community facilities. Are there in any school in catchment area? Ash Green School, Secondary School, Cedar Primary School, St. Giles School, which were not shown on the transport statement of common ground as they were more, far more than acceptable walking distance, which is one kilometer. But Grange Road and Jackers Road School were shown as they were within preferred maximum distance, but they were in the carbon tea. That was when the inspector came, that was given to him. And Ash Green School is even more than preferred maximum walking distance, which is a 3.1 kilometer, which is 3,100 meters, which is a more than 2,000 um, meters maximum preferred distance. So I request uh, why schools are missing in the highway safety and accessibility appraisal by the NFBBC Council. Are schools not important? Uh, children have to walk every day. Dentist 1,800 meters, doctor health center 2,400 meters, which even in Coventry. Um, so in, in the Tatlow King planning letter, said there are nine primary schools within, within two miles walking route of the site. But I don't know where they got this two mile figure because uh, the figure was given 2,000 meters, not two miles. 
two miles is 3,219 meters. So they sat there and St. Giles schools and uh, Cedar school, they are the only one 1,700 meters or 1,931 meters, which is a nearly maximum preferred distance. I found these are only two schools within two, uh, 2,000 meters, which is preferred maximum distance, where, which where is acceptable walking distance. 1,500 meters is acceptable, not uh, the maximum. So no school is within this acceptable walking distance. Askin school is mentioned, but no walking distance only mentioned 12 minutes on bike. Our side, uh, all school uh, students have to go on bike. They have, don't have, they can't walk. If they can walk, then they are 3,100 meters from the Oxbury village. And the fire safety, the fire engine average time should be 5.5 minutes from the fire station to fire point. And if barrier is down over two minutes, then I don't think the fire engine can reach in time. Same about ambulance, how they will reach in time if someone has a heart attack. Figures data are shown which is acceptable for the application, but those figures that are not considered, which will make a detrimental effect on the residents of Hawkesbury. So highway safety and local amenity are more important before we have new development. Planning obligations are okay, but they won't make direct benefit to the resident of Hawkesbury as all the improvements will be out of area they might benefit for the bed, bed birth all other side, but not actually Hawkesbury village residents. And then nothing uh, have written about the Black Horse Road considered. So, um, and on this basis, but I don't know why, like uh, the maximum distance when uh, was mentioned by before uh, is uh, two miles and three miles and uh, Coventry city will take um, uh, children from Hawkesbury village. Um, I don't know where all these type of things comes and uh, so, uh, so I request him um, to defer this application until all data are considered and all the schools and uh, highway issues are uh, done and also the uh, survey by the Hawkesbury Village Residents Association done properly so that uh, that will be the best, best uh, solution. Thank you, Jail. Okay, thank you. There, there was a lot there. So I'm going to ask if, uh, if Jackie or anybody from Highways wants to come back on anything no i'm happy to come back i was just waiting to see if highways wanted to come back but there's a few things on there can i uh, come back on please um yeah, can, yeah. councillor brown um stated about the m6 2026 date and the 2031 dates for amendments to roads um the 2026 date it could well happen before that that is just a, a date that they put in um, when they consider that the maximum, um, because of all the maximum developments in the area, then that is when it's needed. But it could happen sooner than that. The 2031 date, I'm not quite sure where it's from. I think the 2031, it's just basically um, th that was one of the dates that they took for future capacities on the road, rather than that's when highways improvements will be done. Highways improvements are like could could well be do, done before that. That that, as I say, that is just um, a, a date, not a date when the work going to be done. Right. Um, in terms of the schools, the two two miles for junior junior and junior and primary schools, and three miles for secondary schools. That's the guidelines by Warwickshire County Council. Education were asked again on this application be after the deferral, and they were still happy, and have confirmed all of those schools that I've listed. I think there were nine schools, junior infants um, are within the parameters of that two miles. Just to confirm, Ash Green School is 1.9 miles away, secondary school. Um, Sorry if, I, if that wasn't clear on the actual miles to the school. I think that was probably all that okay. came across yeah, on okay. those. Well, uh, we've got Alan Law from County Highways. I'll bring him in in a moment. But I, I, I need to be fair on this. And um, I do know that um, traditionally Foxford and the school at Jackers Road have always taken um, uh, ch children, young people from, uh, from, from across in Hawkesbury. Um, I do know that from my time as a popular councillor. Anyway, uh, Alan Law. 
Hi, thank you. Yes, I'd like to confirm um, what Reese has just um, uh, said. Yes, um, the uh, modelling has highlighted um, required by 2031, but actually more recent modelling su suggesting that Longford Road improvements are, are looking uh, towards 2026, but that's emerging work at the moment the county is undertaking. Um, with regards to the uh, traffic survey data, that was only recently shared with Warwickshire County Council for review. Um, we took advice from our legal department with regards to the drone footage. We're experienced in undertaking drone footage surveys ourselves, um, and uh, we have to be really cautious around uh, privacy impact. Fl flight of drones near the railway and um, over um, uh, buildings. Um, and there's various laws against it. As such, we can't provide comments on those. I have provided comments on the handwritten tallies that were provided. These were five minute or 10 minute snapshots of specific, one, two specific locations and did not give a full overview of a, a highway network that was required for the uh, uh, to undertake an assessment. And it gives no indication of future uh, um, impacts. All it does is uh, highlight present conditions. And, and to be honest, I, you couldn't tell much from the footage that I uh, viewed. Um, with uh, respect of the um, uh, traffic flow information used within the model as raised by uh, Hawkesbury Village Action Group, um, the traffic models um, uh, adhere to all DFT uh, uh, transport analysis guidance uh, and are considered uh, fit for purpose. Um, uh, the traffic flows are uh, current. Um, uh, 2015, 16, 17 information was used in the development of these models and according to TAG that is still uh, valid for use in this kind of assessment. And in fact, DFT has relaxed these rules uh, recently anyway uh, in respect of the uh, COVID issues uh, and, and in impact on undertaking new surveys. Um, in respect of being able to um, know how to undertake these surveys, um, uh, uh, Warwick County Council has full details about um, specification uh, requirements for surveys on their website and we'd be happy to discuss any future survey requirements. Um, the level crossing downtime was fully accounted for, as I think Ashley and others have um, stated already. Uh, a transport study was undertaken by NDS uh, Transmodal on the rail line, um, which considered existing and forecast use of the train line, uh, and that increased uh, the uh, downtime from around 12 minutes to 17 and a half minutes in the hour. Uh, that was an extra two services on the line. That accounts for the knuckle demand that's uh, been mentioned. Um, anything else that's in the rail strategy are future aspirations. They are not commitments and they would have to be assessed in their own right uh, through any uh, future uh, studies of the level crossing or um, uh, uh, by network rail and Warwickshire. Um, and with respect to M6 Junction 3, uh, we've fully assessed uh, impacts at that, and but all highway authorities are in agreement over the required schemes and trigger points. Thanks very much. Cheers. OK, thank you, Alan. Um, Councillor Troman. Thank you, Chair. Uh, a very brief point. I just need to challenge, uh, for the sake of the record and the residents, what Councillor Glass said uh, in respect of the uh, alleging that the um, the inspector just arbitrarily put that piece of, a piece of land into the borough plan. Um, the inspectors don't have the power to do that and can't do that. This was included in the borough plan because Nuneaton and Bedworth Borough Council put it forward to go into the borough plan. Thank you. Yes, and every member of this committee is a member of that council. Thank you. Councillor Phillips. Thank you May, very much, Chair. Um, we've had a recommendation and we need to find reasons um, not to accept that recommendation if the committee finds fit. So really sorry for the residents. I think it is an actual good development, but it is argumented that it's in the wrong place. 
Um, it's got community centre, etc. It's just where it is. And our main objection has been, and has been since 2012, um, it's traffic. And as far as I can see, reading the reports, Queen's Council, etc., and all the other paperwork that I've um, received, that government planning laws, um, and my expectation that planning officers, who I do expect to um, follow government planning law, uh, which I believe they've done, and um, any objections will be opposed by the inspector, the Secretary of State, as in 2012, uh, do. Unfortunately, the residents of Hawkesbury do not support refusal. I think this planning committee will have great difficulty in coming forward for any reasons for refusal. Um, so, it's upsetting for the residents. Government planning law is government planning law. And um, although I disagree with Councillor Tromans, and that's for another point about putting this land in there in the first place, that's basically it, Chair. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Wilson. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think there are possibly two maybe three of us who actually in this meeting tonight who were there for, for the 2012 planning application and I do remember it well because I remember it being a bit of a on and off again about whether it was um, approved or not I think we voted on it two or three times that night if memory serves um, so I'm, I do remember the history of this site I know a number of barristers and solicitors in my line of work um, and I don't take kindly as a committee member to veiled threats of um, costs or otherwise I will do what is in the best interest of the residents and uh, make a decision based on that it isn't us or indeed either the barrister who to be fair to him is paid to give an opinion but that is his job it is ultimately the inspector um, and the Secretary of State who makes a decision and, and the award of costs. I do have to be mindful of what they say, but this is, as Councillor Phillips said, the wrong application in the uh, wrong place, in my view. But we are, have our hands tied behind our back because of the actions of the Council, because it is this Council the Labour administration, that is, because none of, I certainly didn't, I don't believe anyone who sits on the opposition benches voted to put it in, uh, put this site in as a strategic housing allocation. And it is incorrect to assert that inspectors put strategic housing sites into local plans. It is their job to assess whether they are suitable and meet the criteria of the MPPF and all the relevant acts and et cetera, et cetera. But it is not them who propose sites. They merely judge on their suitability. To say otherwise is fundamentally misleading to the residents who will be watching and listening to this tonight. Because I well remember being sat there in the cabinet uh, meeting, in the times when we could actually sit in the town hall, which seems a lifetime ago, to watch the Labour administration put this site into the borough plan. That is a matter of historical record. And there is, I believe, video recordings on YouTube to prove that. And to try and deflect the blame from anyone else is misleading to the residents and they deserve better than that. If this application is to be approved, they deserve to have this approved without people trying to rewrite history and to do so in the full knowledge of what they are doing. I don't like this application, but sometimes it takes a good man or woman to stand up for their principles and what they believe in. And I just cannot reconcile myself to having to vote for this because I believe it is fundamentally wrong with the accesses into and out of Hawkesbury Village. It will make the existing residents' lives a nightmare. And I don't believe I can in all conscience vote for it, Chair. Where that leaves us, I don't know, but sometimes some of us have to stand up and be counted, Chair. 
Thank you. I, I think you know exactly where it leaves us. Councillor Watkins. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, I'm not really in an habit of repeating myself, but um, I find on this application I've got to, because um, it's still only got the one access in and out. It's still got the nine sites. I've read, I've read the comments from Warwickshire County Council and everything about there, there being um, shared footways on, on the main road. I know all that, I've seen that last time. But it still doesn't change the fact that uh, on nine sites around this, this, this estate, where mainly it's affordable housing, outside of that affordable housing will be unadopted roads. So people that are, are in affordable housing will be having to pay service charges to, to keep the, the road outside their houses up to some sort of standard. Um, it, it's not just this application, Chair. It's the way that it's going all the time now. Um, I don't know what we can do about it as a planning, as, as the, the, the Borough Council, but I think it's wrong. I think it's wrong to expect people to to um, pay for, for the service charges out of their road and not to have a public footpath. Even in warehouses, you have to have separate traffic to um, uh, pedestrians. Um, so, still disappointed in it, Chair, but we're backed into a corner, I think, here. Um, very little else we can do. Um, so, let's move to the vote. Thank you, Chair. Does any other member that's not already spoken wish to speak? No? Councillor Phillips, did you want to come back in or is your hand up from before? Yeah, I think it was... Um, unfortunately, um, Councillor Wilson was playing politics in blaming the Labour Council for putting this land in the first place into the Borough Plan. That's all. Thank you. And um, consistently over the years, I have tried to um, rail against this committee being political. We're here to consider planning applications for the best interests of the, all of the residents of the borough and, and, and you know, not on parochial things either. Uh, Councillor Pandey, you want to come back in, oh, please? Yeah, thank you. I just want clarification. I don't know get the answer about the Black Horse Road one side payment. Uh, what the width why? You know, so I don't know got any answer if there are two mobility scooter purchases, how wide should be. And then uh, the other one is from Jackie, although give the answer. And they, it's a, when an um, inspector came and they all the report was given, this two kilometer um, is the maximum preferred distance. How they change it to miles and uh, two miles, three miles? So I can't believe uh, they, they, is the goalpost changing or the children are getting more fitter okay. and uh, they can walk more now than a two meter, <laughs> two kilometer, two, three kilometer now. So, yeah, you, uh, Councillor Pande, you said that in your first presentation. Let's not go around the region. No, because I, I, I said a two kilometer. Uh, maximum preferred distance. Uh, so how they have changed to, she said, uh, two kilometres for the primary school, three kilometres. So where are those old figures to keep continuing? You're repeating things. It's just taking... Yeah. Okay, time. thank you. So I just make my point. Thank so thank you. you. Thank you. Um, okay. Um, as, as chair of the committee, it'd be remiss of me not to say to members that, um, you know, we are a planning applications committee we consider the applications that come into us. Our considerations have to be based on on the uh, lo the adopted local plan and the policies that have been adopted by this council. I guess every one of us will probably have something in the local plan we don't like, but it was a decision taken by the council for that adopted local plan uh, based on, all, uh, in particular this case, recommendations from uh, from the government inspector. And I absolutely agree with Councillor Wilson about having our hands tied behind our backs. And it pretty much sometimes feels like we've got a gun to our head. But that's because of the government policies that have been uh, put in place. And, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to make it harder for local residents. 
Right, okay, thank you. I, I'm going to move to the vote now. Wahida, if you could go through the list, please. Thank you, Chair. Please, can you indicate for, against or abstain when your name is called? Councillor Walmsley. Councillor Hancox. So I can't hear. Against, to be clear. Yes, I heard. I heard you. Thank you, Councillor Wormsley. Councillor Hancox. For. Councillor Pomfret. For. Councillor Pandaher. Councillor Pandaher, can you hear me? Okay. Against her. Oh. Councillor Phillips. For. Councillor Rudkin. For. Councillor Sargent. Against. Councillor Shepherd. For. Councillor Smith. Against. Councillor Tandy. For. Councillor Tromans. Against. Councillor Watkin. For. Councillor Wilson. Against. Sorry, Chair, bear with me. Could you just confirm, Wahid, I make that seven votes to six in favour of re the recommendation? Yes, Chair, that's, I agree with that. Seven, four and six against. That's right, yeah. OK, then. Thank you very much. So that, Thank you. Uh, that recommendation is approved. If we can move on to the second item, which is Marriott Road, Bedworth. OK, thank you, Chair. This application is for three new detached dwellings and associated parking on land to the rear of 1 to 5 Marriott Road, Bedworth. The immediate adjacent surrounding area are either semi or groups of four terraced houses in a design known as Cornish type dwellings, which are prefabricated houses built after the Second World War. Jackie, Jackie, should yep. there be a presentation with this? Sorry, I haven't. It's, it's it not showing. Let me just no. try, try doing it again. No, thank you. Let me just try it again. Sorry, it was showing that it was. Uh, th thanks for that, Ash. No, we're not. We're not seeing it yet. OK, I'll take it off and on again. Is that can yeah. you see it now? OK, yeah, yeah. sorry. Right. Um, they were originally built as precast concrete, reinforced con uh, concrete and concrete panels at ground level, with the first floor being a vertical mansard roof finished in roof tiles with a standard hip roof above. Some of the houses have been refurbished at ground floor with bricks or brick slips, as shown by the photograph on the slide, which is the house adjacent to the proposed access. The overall height of these existing dwellings is approximately seven metres. Beyond these dwellings are a mix of house types of differing ages and design. The site was previously residential garages, now demolished, and is accessed via a single width vehicular access to the side of One Marriott Road, as you can see on the slide. The site is fairly rectangular in shape. The western boundary of the site is to the rear garden boundaries of 1, 3 and 5 Marriott Road. To the north boundary, let me just get to point, those are the Marriott Road ones. Uh, the northern boundary being the, the dwelling and the side garden of 18 Him Himley Road. To the east, the boundary sides onto the dwelling and garden of 16 Himley Road. To the south were the rear boundaries of 9 to 23 Lindley Road. The site seems relatively level to the surrounding properties. 
Much of the site is hard surfaced and has become overgrown with evidence of fly tipping. The surrounding fences are a mix of materials. There have been four objection responses from five people. The objections are proceed in your agenda, page 72, and are mainly around the height and character of the new houses compared to the existing. Loss of privacy, overlooking and overshadowing, loss of ecology and biodiversity, increase of road traffic and concerns about the appropriateness of the access into the site. There is a letter of support, support from Bedworth Society on the agenda and on the addendum there is a further letter of support from Bedworth Society as well. The key issues to assess in the determination of this application, let me just move the slide, are before you shown on the slide. In terms of the principle of development and land designation, the land is not designated in the adopted borough plan, meaning that there are no specific restrictions on the site. As it has come forward for residential development, it is classified as a windfall site. The borough plan has considered that windfall sites can make up at least 247 dwellings over the plan period. The site is also deliverable and could bring forward these three dwellings for the council's five-year housing land supply. The site is previously developed, so classed as brownfield. National and local guidance means cl makes clear that brownfield land should be used efficiently and used as much as possible for development, especially as it's within the settlement boundary. The site is also considered to be in a sustainable location, which also weighs heavily in favour of national and local policy. Market housing mix is provided in the borough plan using figures from 2013. This states the greatest need is three bedroom properties at 53%, two bedrooms at 33%. The proposal is four bedroom properties and the market need from 2013 states the need of those on 8.9%. The proposal would therefore not provide the greatest need, but as it's only three houses, it would be difficult to support refusal on housing need at appeal. Overall, it's considered that the principle of the development of the site weighs heavily in favour of the development of the site. In terms of residential impact, the plans have been amended um, since your agenda. Um, the first reason for refusal um, has been removed as shown on your agenda. I will go into that and the amendments as I go through the residential amenity. The application largely meets the Council's Sustainable Design and Construction SPD, including compliance with the internal nationally described space standards. Section 11 of this SPD is used for assessing residential amenity, including daylight, sunlight and privacy, including the way buildings relate to each other, orientation and separation distance to protect acceptable levels of amenity for both existing and future residents. An assessment has been carried out in regard to this section. As I say, since the agenda, amended plans have been received to pull Unit 1, further from the boundary with 18 Himley Road and the other units have moved slightly in order to allow this. Therefore, some of the measurements are not the same as reported in your agenda, but the scheme has been reassessed on this basis. To complicate matters, the, the numbers of the units have been swapped on the site layout plan between the revision on the agenda and the latest revision, which is E, which is in front of you now. Unit 3, shown on drawing number 103, revision D on the agenda, is now unit 1 and vice versa. This also means proposed side windows are different to that in your agenda. And again, I'll go through that uh, within my assessment. The site is assessed, access sorry, to the side of 1 Marriott Road and the garden boundaries of 1, 3 and 5 Marriott Road back onto the site. The nearest proposed area is to be parking, driveway and frontages of the new property properties. Those are the frontages and those are the ones in Marriott Road. Considering the impact to number one, 
the front habitable, habitable windows of units two and three are at least 17 metres off this neighbour's rear boundary. The minimum distance considered acceptable in overlooking for private amenity is seven metres, so the distance well exceeds this. In reference to the impact to original rear, win rear windows of this property, this existing property is extended at ground floor, so the only habitable windows are at first floor and the distance exceeds 36 metres from the nearest proposed first floor windows of units two and three to this neighbour's first floor windows and a further two metres to the second floor proposed windows. Therefore, again, the distance fully complies with the 20 and 30 metres set out in the SPD for window to window distance. In reference to the impact to number three, Marriott Road, in terms of the impact to this neighbour's rear garden, the front habitable windows of units one and two are set off this neighbour's rear boundary by over 14 metres. So again, while well exceeds the seven metre minimum distance in the SBD in terms of overlooking. In reference to the impact to original rear windows, this existing property is also extended to the rear at ground floor. So again, the only original habitable windows are at first floor at a distance of 35 metres and again, two further metres to the proposed second floor windows. Therefore, the distance again fully complies with the 20 and 30 metres set out in the SBD. Next, number five, you can just see there. In relation to the impact of the garden, the front habitable windows of Unit 1 are set off this neighbour's rear boundary by over 14 metres as well. So again, exceeds the seven metres distance in the SPD. In terms of this neighbour's original rear windows, there's over 35 metres from the original ground and first floor windows of this neighbouring property to the new ground and first floor windows of Unit 1. And again, two further metres from the proposed second floor because all the second floor proposed windows are set back at further two metres. So again, it exceeds the 20 and the 30 metres set out in the SBD. In relation to 15 to 23 Lindley Road, that's these properties here, they back on to either the existing vehicular access to the site or the new driveway parking area and the new front gardens. Environmental health have no issues with noise to these properties similarly to the houses in Marriott Road and it's considered that the impact therefore is acceptable to these properties. In relation to 13 Lindley Road which is this one as you'll see this house of Lindley Road these all actually follow in line along there it's just because the plan was so large I needed to close in on it so I've lost some of the existing houses on there. In relation to the impact of this rear garden the side of the ground and first floor of unit three will be along a third of this neighbour's rear garden boundary and considerably less of the second floor element. The side of this nearest proposed unit is approximately 1.4 metres off this neighbour's rear boundary. So it, it was previously 1.6, so it's, it's slightly closer by 200 uh, millimetres, which would be considered to be de minimis. The new unit will be northeast of this neighbour's rear garden, so no loss of direct sunlight, and it's considered that the sense of enclosure will be acceptable especially as there appears to be detached buildings within the end of this neighbour's rear garden. To assess the impact to rear windows of 13 Lindley Road, the distance from the rear original windows of this existing property and the side of Unit 3 is over 23 metres. The second floor is sat back 200 mils further. The SBD states that from windows to a side wall there should be 14 meters for a two-story and 16 meters for a three-story the distance therefore easily easily complies with this in terms of overlooking the proposal includes a ground floor side vestry window to the front door the front door to this new property is there however because of the fence, because of the, the, the boundary fence, there'll be no overlooking from the side windows of the front door.
There is also on the first floor a proposed bathroom window to the side elevation. However, this is considered to be a non-habitable window and would likely be obscure glazed anyway for privacy. But if approved, we could condition to be permanently obscure glazed and to have no opening lights below 1.7 metres from the finished floor level of the bathroom in order you couldn't look out the windows of the bathroom into those gardens. In relation to number 11, assessing the impact of the garden first, this will have the side of unit three along the entire length of the rear garden. The side of this nearest proposed unit is approximately, again, 1.4 metres off this neighbour's boundary, which will provide some mitigation for the sense of enclosure. The new un unit will be northeast of this neighbour's rear garden, so there will be no loss of direct sunlight. There is no doubt there will be some sense of enclosure to this neighbour's garden, but the distance from this neighbour's rear windows to the side wall of the proposal is 23.5 metres, and therefore the proposal would meet the 14 and 16 metre distances set out in the SBD. In conclusion, to all these neighbouring properties, the proposal is in full compliance with the Council's SBD in terms of privacy, sunlight and sense of enclosure. The next property I'm looking at for the impact is number 18 Himley Road, which is that property there. That's the rear garden of that property. The original plans, as I say, had this nearest unit um, almost within a metre of the boundary to this property um, and was a reason for the first refusal on your agenda. However, since the agenda was printed, this unit has been, at the suggestion of officers, been moved further away from this boundary. So, considering that, and, and also in consideration that this actual, uh, let me just home it in on that to make it clearer, there's 18. This rear garden is pretty large, it's pretty long at 30 metres. And as I say, this nearest unit is now two metres at that end, very, very slightly closer at the other end of that neighbouring property. So this unit, which is relatively deep at 10.55 metres at two storeys, was originally within, as I say, 1 to 1.2 metres of the boundary. Uh, and now, as I say, it's between 2.1 and 1.9 metres away, so it's been moved further away. This, whilst the new dwelling will be uh, along a third of this garden length, which is approximately 5.4 metres from the rear of 18 Himley, it is considered, as I say, that the reason one has now been mitigated because it has been pulled further away from that window. The nearest compliance, we haven't actually got uh, specific supplementary planning guidance in relation to this. The nearest guidance we can use is paragraph 11.9, which states that two storey projections directly to the side of the neighbour's residential amenity would only be considered acceptable up to three metres. But as I say, this has now been pulled further away from the boundary. So, as it's considered that whilst there certainly will be an impact to the garden, particularly as the building is south and southwest orientation to the garden, on balance, the impact is, is considered now acceptable. In terms of privacy, Unit 1 would have a ground floor toilet to the side, but which would be screened by the fence. There would also be a first floor side landing window overlooking this neighbour's garden. Most landing windows are obscure glazed for privacy. However, if approved, the landing window could be conditioned to be obscure glazed in perpetuity with no opening lights below 1.7 metres of the landing to prevent any overlooking. In terms of the impact to number 18's rear windows, the rear of this neighbouring property has habitable rear windows and they will be infringed at 45 degrees. However, this is going to be at least seven metres away so it will lessen the impact quite considerably. 
it's therefore considered that the sense of enclosure to this neighbour is now on balance to be acceptable. Looking at number 16 Himley Road, which is at 90 degrees, that's the length of their garden. In reference to the impact of the rear garden, the windows of the new proposed properties are staggered, as you can see, to the side garden boundary of this neighbouring property and northwest of this garden. Unit one is virtually in line to the side of number 16, so will have no impact to its rear garden. First floor habitable windows of unit two there will be approximately 9.2 metres from the side garden from this garden and will overlook the middle of this neighbour's garden. The rear first floor habitable windows of unit three will overlook the bottom of this neighbour's garden at a distance of approximately seven metres. To prevent overlooking the minimum distance of first floor and above windows is seven metres in the SPD, so the proposal does comply with this. The second floor windows of these new properties will be set back a further two metres and are in any case to bathrooms and dressing rooms which are not considered to be habitable and which are likely in any case to be obscure glaze for privacy. Looking at the impact to this neighbour's side and rear windows, the rear windows of this neighbouring property are at 45 degrees to the new rear windows of the units, so there will be no direct overlooking between windows. Unit 1 is more or less, as I say, in line with this property, and there is a side window to this existing property, which the owner states is a utility or a boiler room, whilst the main kitchen window is to the rear. This utility window would be classed as a non-habitable window within the SBD, so the distance of 13 metres from the rear windows of Unit 1 to this window is considered acceptable. In conclusion, it's considered that whilst most of the residential amenity exceed the SBD for existing properties, there will be an impact to 16 and 18 Hinley Road, but it's now considered on balance to be acceptable and as I say, this reason for refusal has now been removed and shown on your addendum. In terms of residential amenity between the new properties, the properties are staggered by approximately two and a half metres, which meets three metre maximum suggested in the SBD. In terms of the impact to visual amenity, National and local policy states that development should be designed to a high standard and provide local distinctiveness and have characteristics that are sensitive to the layout, street pattern and built form of the area. The units are very contemporary with facing brickwork, render and pre-weathered zinc walls at second floor with the roof in slate grey metal roofing sheets. The brickwork is to be broken by the first floor line externally and the second floor is to be set in. The first and second floor roofs are to extend beyond the building, providing curved overhangs and are to be mono pitched. You can see from the side elevations. These new units will be taller than the surrounding properties at nine metres in height, which is approximately two metres taller than the existing neighbouring houses. You can see that from the elevation uh, from the section there. The windows are a contemporary design with many being floor to ceiling. The contemporary nature and height is considered to be acceptable in terms of visual amenity and as a grouping of three it is just considered sufficient for the development to provide its own cohesive form and the units will largely not be seen from existing public spaces due to the surrounding houses. Rochester Highways have been involved throughout the application process. Their initial objections to the scheme were significant increase in traffic compared to the previous use of six garages. Shared access should be five metres in width to allow two way flows of traffic. The access is less than 3.8 metres, so could mean vehicles wait in the highway to allow vehicles exiting the site or could lead to people reversing back onto the highway out of the access if an oncoming vehicle was met in the access coming out of the site. 
poor existing intervisibility between the site and the public highway would exacerbate this problem. The shared driveway for pedestrian, cyclists and vehicular traffic would not be safe or suitable with no demonstration to show how speeds could be reduced or details of lighting. Not demonstrated that delivery vehicles could access the site and turn within the site. Visibility displays from the vehicular access are already not met and as the area is outside of the ownership of the, of the applicant, it could be obstructed further. Pulling distances for refuse bins would exceed the maximum distance in the manual for streets and British standards. Refuse bins left on the footpath on Marriott Road could cause highway visibility issues. Rochester County Council Highways consider that the application is therefore contrary to paragraphs 108 and 110 of the MPPF. These paragraphs are quoted on page 80 of your agenda and refer to provision of safe and suitable access for all, including pedestrians and people with limited mobility, cyclists and reduction of conflict between users, avoidance of significant impacts on highway safety, efficient delivery of goods and access by service and emergency vehicles. The agent clarified that speed restric restrictions and lighting could be provided to the access, so highways considered this could partly assist in terms of the sa safety aspect of the conflict of users on the site. The planning department considered that the conflict of two-way traffic in the access could also partly be addressed by having give way markings within the site to give prominence to incoming traffic. The agent stated that a covenant could be placed on the new residence to ensure that traffic within the site would give way to oncoming traffic. But Warwickshire County Council Highway, similar to the planning department, considered that a covenant was not a practicable or enforceable way, especially for visitors to the site, to adhere to this. In regard to deliveries to the site, the plans were amended to provide a turning space within the site to which highways considered acceptable for delivery drivers. Just go there, you can see the turning area. Warwickshire Fire and Rescue Services originally objected to the scheme due to the width of the access for emergency vehicles, but agreed this could be overcome by the installation of sprinkler systems and to which has been agreed by the applicant and could be conditioned. So therefore their objection was removed. MBBC Refuse and Recycling Team considered that whilst the 30 metre length of the vehicular access was an excessive pull distance, they did not object to the proposal as long as the bins were placed on Marriott Road by the residents to be emptied and then returned to the properties by the residents. The response of no objection from Warwickshire Fire and Rescue and the Council's refuse and recycling team were forwarded to Warwickshire County Council Highways. This led to further concerns from highways that six bins left on the footpath in Marriott Road for collection could affect highway visibility and they recommended that a bin collection point was provided within the access. If members decide to approve the application tonight, this could be conditioned. The final response from Warwickshire Highways remained of objection as they still considered the scheme was contrary to paragraphs 108 and 110 of the MPPF in terms of the uh, insufficient visibility displays from the access and again because of the conflict and the narrowness of the access. In terms of encouraging sustainable transport, the site could promote cycling as a cycle storage area is shown on the plans and the site is in proximity to transport links and services on Smorrell Lane. In terms of parking, the site plan provides two parking spaces per property within the site and to which highways have not commented upon. In conclusion, it's considered that whilst many of Warwickshire County Council highways can be overcome by condition, highway safety could still be an issue as not all highways concerns can be addressed via condition 
as I say, such as the inadequate visibility displays and general conflicts due to the narrowness of the access between vehicles and other road users. National and local policies calls for the protection and enhancement of ecology and biodiversity. The Council's parks team recognised that the site had partly rewilded, but recognised it was likely to be species poor, but requested a preliminary ecological appraisal, which would determine further works. This document re was requested by the agent, but not received. The Council's parks team were contacted in again, and stated they would have preferred to receive this information before responding, but as the application needed to be determined that, given that the site was relatively small and ecologically isolated, Parks considered the likelihood of protected species being present was very low. They considered that conditions could alleviate any concerns. Their suggested conditions, if approved, were that an ecologist was present to supervise during the site clearance and biodiversity mitigation could be delivered via provision of bird and bat bricks, a landscape condition to maximise biodiversity, mammal gaps in fences and a lighting condition to take into account ecology to prevent or limit light spill. In conclusion, it's considered that the impact of biodiversity and ecology can be made acceptable via condition. Policy requires that flood risk is not increased elsewhere. The development site is located in flood zone one, which is suitable for all land uses. The nature of the application meant that neither the Environment Agency nor Warwickshire County Council flood risk management could be consulted. Seven Trent Water have not responded to the consultation. In conclusion, it is considered that flooding and drainage is acceptable. In terms of contamination, policy requires that contaminated land does not affect the health of future occupiers. The Council's environmental health have no objections subject to the standard for con uh, contamination conditions. In conclusion, it's considered that common contamination can be made acceptable via conditions. In conclusion, there are many benefits for allowing residential development on this site. The presumption in favour of sustainable development, the reuse of an underutilised brownfield site within a settlement boundary and as a windfall site. There will no doubt be an impact to 16 and 18 Himley Road, but with the amended plans on balance, the impact is, is considered acceptable. Unfortunately, as Warwickshire County Council highways have sustained their objection on highway safety grounds, this does weigh against the application and is now the sole reason for recommendation of refusal, as it's not been demonstrated that all the highway safety issues, such as vis visibility displays and conflict of road users, can be overcome via condition. The recommendation is therefore refusal, as set out in the agenda, but as amended by the addendum to, re to remove reason one. Thank you, Chair. OK, thanks. Thanks, Jackie. Um, will you be taking the, the plan down? Or anyway? I can, uh, it's up to members. Do you want to, me to leave it on? Please. Yeah, leave it on for now then. Um, right, we do have one speaker, Mr. Rhys Burris, who is the applicant. Can I, first of all, apologise for your long wait, uh, Mr. Burris, and thank you for your patience, but we're here now. Uh, uh, Mr. Burris. No, no need. No need. Sir, sir can you... We, can, we hear can hear you, yeah. Me? Yes. Um, no need to apologise. I found the... Earlier, I'm very instructive, actually. Yeah. Um, can, can I just so say, Mr. Boris, the, uh, the no, the no, I did send a letter to all. Yeah, Mr. Boris, the egg timer will start when you start talking, unfortunately. Okay. 
Well, just to, conf I, I hope you have all had a chance to read the uh, uh, event uh, over the weekend to do, uh, the chairman. Um, I, I basically wanted to be available to members to answer any questions which you might have, but also to stress that as far as I can tell, I, I thought the presentation by the council officer was extremely fair. Uh, and all, it, as I understand it, the gist of the suggestion that the members should re refuse is, is entirely down to the Warwickshire Highways um, Authority. And what I would like to say about that is, I, I don't dismiss their concern as, um, unre uh, as uh, you know, wholly without, and I do take the point. But I do think that the office, the councillors yourselves on the committee might, might nevertheless take what could be called a robust or um, a pragmatic view that on balance, the benefit to society of having these marvellous is commended by the Bedworth Society, unlike in your previous application, outweighs the um, objections of the highways. And if I may do so, I would just like to refer the members of the committee to a, a comparatively recent precedent uh, on an application that you had in respect of School Lane and Coventry Road Junction, I think two years ago. And there, the Warwickshire County Council highways objected to, uh, on as far as I can see, exactly the same grounds that the increase in housing would mean an increase in access road to School Lane. And of course, School Lane is much more than the councils, the committee or the then committee, took the view that on balance, it was to grant the application for seven dwellings. And I would just, after all, we're not talking about a dozen new dwellings here, or even half a dozen, we're just talking three. And with societal change, it's reasonable to imagine that in future, you know, especially after this year's people will be working from home, they'll be using electric bicycles, which we're making provision for with uh, charging points for electric bikes as well as electric cars. And on balance, I would ask the committee to, to take the pragmatic and uh, robust view that you can grant uh, this application and that conditions in respect of the speed of traffic going in and out, giving way to traffic coming in, and so forth. All of that can be a combination of signage and signage and uh, covenants, legally binding covenants. And I'm available to answer any questions councillors may have. Okay, thank you, Mr. Burris. I did let it go over slightly because uh, the the connection went out a couple of times very briefly. I think we've all got the gist of what you've said. Are there any points of clarification? No? If not, um, to enable debate to take place, can I move the recommendation, which is refusal, but it is only on the, um, on the one ground now of the uh, the, the concern from the County Council of that entrance to the driveway. Uh, can just confirm, Jackie, that I'm right with that. That is correct. Yeah, it's highway safety. OK, thank you. Um, so is that is that seconded? I would second it for debate, Chair. OK, thank you. Um, any member wish to speak? Councillor Troman. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I just want to get a little bit oh, more sorry, clarification. Sorry, Councillor Troman. I do apologise. Can I just stop there? Sure. Uh, did I ask for... It's all right, I'm losing the plot here. Um, did I ask if there was any points of clarification? You did, yeah, Chair. Right. Yeah, thank you. I, I, I was worried then that I hadn't done it. Right, Councillor Trovers, thank you. Yeah, no worries. Um, I, I just want to ask officers, um, 
I, I, I always I, I hear that we've done a, a lot of amendments and, and managed to get it within the, the right distances and and it's now deemed acceptable. But I, I always feel for residents on the ground, the existing residents that are there, when something's looming up in their back garden, uh, uh, in their back garden that wasn't there before. Um, where it's buildings that are of a similar size to their own, and um, it's a long way, you know, many metres distance, as you can see there, as you just put up 35 metres and everything, that, that's kind of understandable. But where these dwellings are taller, they're three storeys, um, we, we wouldn't be setting a precedent by approving this if, uh, for the for the rest of the borough, would we? That you can put three-storey buildings in amongst a whole bunch of um, established two storeys. Would this be just seen as a one-off? Okay, can can I come back to that, Councillor Hancock? Yes, please, Jackie. Okay. Um, there's two th reasonings on that. Uh, in terms of three storeys. Uh, we have to address by distance standards. The distance standards, as you can appreciate, for three storeys are increased from uh, what they are for two storeys, but they've been taken into consideration on the actual assessment. Uh, in terms of we would then look at the character in relation to the neighbouring properties. Because of the, the, this, the way this site is, you're only going to get fairly limited views maybe down the access from public space you'll see them from neighboring gardens uh, but within the site but within public areas it's going to be fairly limited oh. as you can see uh, on the section as well um, the this the third the second floor has been set back to try to mitigate a little bit more that sense of prominence if you like of, of being three stories okay and as you're saying it, it's not visible from the road so i i get i get that bit of it okay thank you very much just for, for clarifying that much appreciated um councillor phillips did you want yeah. to come in or was it your hand still up from before thank you very much uh, chair i'm just thinking whether or not yet again this is a um conversation that the developer and the Wiltshire County Council have to have and, and whether or not this could be deferred until um, they clarify the access to the properties because it's only three properties and uh, maybe something ought to be able to be done about that chair. Okay. Councillor Sergeant. Thanks, Chair. Um, just to, for a bit of clarification, on, on the third floor, they're, they're set back a little bit, which looks like there's some roof space there. Is, is that, you know, the windows at the front, I assume that's the front, look fairly big. So, in a sense, she somebody could actually put a balcony there couldn't they is that <clears throat> is that the case is there a, have i missed that completely is there a balcony there um it they don't, i mean it's not my cup of tea to be fair i don't like the look of them um i'm not keen on them being three stories either in in that particular area um i prefer it to be uh, two stories but <clears throat> just for clarification um is that you know could there be a balcony people put there so people come out, you know. If I can just come back on that, uh, building regulations wise, I don't that there is no intention for that to become a balcony. Um, and if it did become a balcony for safety, then people would have to put handrails up, etc., around it. It would then become uh, a platform, and because it was a raised platform as such, it would require planning permission, and we'd unlikely grant planning permission because of overlooking to houses. But it could be we we could potentially put that as a condition. I'm sure that there's to be no balcony provision uh, if if members were to choose approval. Thanks, Chair. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I think regardless of um, what decision is taken on this, I think that would be a fair condition 
uh, to add in. Unless anybody uh, sort of speaks against it, I'll assume they've agreed that we include that anyway. Uh, Councillor Smith. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, totally agree with the comments um, Councillor Sargent just made. Um, I too don't actually like these buildings. They're not my cup of tea. Um, and I don't like the fact they're three storey with two storey around them. But I think on balance with mitigation, you know, they're not very visible from the street scene. So they're not going to affect much that way. I do have concerns about the limited access, but again, on balance, it's only three houses. Um, I do like the idea of using these little plots of brownfield wasteland and putting houses on them. I think it's a great idea to bring them into use. So um, it's a difficult one when, when there's still um, an objection from highways, but I'm I'm erring on on actually uh, thinking it might be worth approving this one as far as I'm concerned. Um, I wait and see what other comments are. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you, um, Councillor Shepherd. Thank you, Chair. Um, a bit like the other speakers, I can't say I'm too happy with the design. Of the and certainly the overlooking in terms of seventeen and eighteen, um, they just they just don't fit it for me into the street scene. I know they can't be seen that much from the street, but actually overlooking from, from gardens surrounding them, I'm I'm unhappy with. Um, in terms of the highway objections, I can understand why they've objected in terms of passing traffic and things so I could most probably support the recommendation from officers however I did notice that if it does go for approval there's nothing in there around hours of work in the, any conditions and I would like something added on to that because I think that can be a detriment to the residents thank you chair okay I think there's normally a standard thing on that uh, Jackie can you just answer about working hours yeah, we wouldn't normally condition uh, just for three houses uh, because it, it would be under environmental health to govern under their own legislation. But there would be no reason why we couldn't, uh, bearing in mind the proximity to the other houses. And I'm sure uh, the applicant would agree to that. OK, thank you. Uh, it's all right, I'm scribbling things down. Um, Councillor Wormsley. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, but for what it's worth, I think that as we heard through the presentation, actually there were a number of options for potential conditions that were raised by the officer throughout those presentations. I thought that those were eminently sensible should the committee wish to uh, actually approve this application. Um, and I think from, from what I remember hearing most of, if not all of, um, were actually the, the applicant had already said that they'd agree to that in principle anyway. I think we're again echoing a comments made early one colleague. We're looking at three prop, three houses here, so a relatively small number in that respect, on Brownfield site, which you know I would far rather see us developing on than uh, having to declassify green further green belt in the future, as uh, as, as as was decided by um, as was decided under the um, the local plan, um, and as we saw the previous application on that basis. So I think this is a very sensible um, step forwards. I also note in the slide currently shown um, in the the top centre we have the sort of the these properties heights versus the existing properties, and I think it's worth noting that oh sorry yeah I think it's worth noting that actually they seem to have quite a high roof line the existing properties. So if you look at where the uh, the existing properties, which I'm assuming the sort of the silhouettes more in the background, have quite a high roof line. Uh, and to me, therefore, actually, although they're a, a uh, uh, they're across three levels, they have obviously a ground, a first and a second floor. Actually, they don't seem to be too much um, higher than the existing uh, roof lines of properties, particularly on that side um, to the rear of the property, uh, the new properties where the roof line looks to be not particularly much higher, um, almost level, actually, in, in, from what I can see with the existing surrounding properties. So. 
I think it's, you know, I know they're not everybody's cup of tea. Um, personally, I, I, I think they're quite nice, quite modern, and I think these can be built to, to, to reasonable standards. And, and many of these new properties are obviously much more energy efficient than than the properties surrounding them. So I think actually, um, upon balance for me, I, I would probably um, see uh, this application approved on that basis, um, particularly the basis it's on only the three properties. Uh, and also, obviously, though subject to two conditions, of which I think the ones that, that um, the, the, the points that would have concerned me actually were matters related uh, and, and actually raised already throughout the presentation by our officer of potential conditions anyway. So I think we've got a good basis there, um, in addition with any ones that any other colleagues might come up with. So in terms of the proposal, which the proposal currently to is to refuse, I'm against that particular motion at the moment because I, I think it'd be good to see the this site brought to, to use um, subject to mitigations. Thanks, Chair. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Wilson. Yes, thank you, Chair. This is a slightly unusual one in that normally as a committee, we're begging county highways to give us a reason for refusal um, on, a, on a number of things. And yet the it seems the consensus of the committee is emerging that actually we'd like to approve it if we can. Um, and there have been a number of valid points raised, particularly by Councillor Walmsley about the, the roof lines, etc. As, as he points out, there's not a great world of difference in the roof lines, considering the distances involved um, with the other uh, properties. The thing which kind of gets me is that this is a former garage site. So assuming that garages were still there, you could still have vehicles entering and exiting that particular plot of land and still be perfectly legitimate to do so. And you met, I mean, looking at the, the, the um, size of the plot of land, you might have more than three garages on there, perhaps five or six, maybe even seven. So you could potentially have even more vehicular movements on that particular plot of land per day if you go with its currently approved land use. So I'm slightly perplexed by County Highway's um, decision or recommendation on that one, uh, because if there were still garages there, there would still be, in theory, cars going in and out, potentially up to 14 times a day, if there were, assuming that there were seven there, going to work and coming back, and only one car per household. So normally I would, I, I, I love it when county highways give a recommendation of approval, but in this instance, I'm, I'm erring on the side of approval because if this property, I mean, I'm, as others have said, it's not necessarily my cup of tea, the design, but buyer beware, you, you, you pay your money, you take your, your chance. But if we were to leave this land as it were, they could have garages on it and there wouldn't be any particular issues with it. Or we just let the area continue to decline and leave it as a, a back garden wasteland, which serves no particular purpose to anyone. And it would have, this actually tidies up um, an area which looks pretty disused and needs a bit of tender loving care so i'm minded to ignore the county in this res in this regard and actually approve on the basis that the number of vehicular movements would be roughly the same anyway and they'd have to get in and out with the same um, visibility display issues um and i don't see what would stop them if they were to re-erect some garage sites there so it's it's an unusual one chair but i'm minded to approve Okay, thank you. Um, I've got two more speakers. Uh, Councillor Wilson, I think you put your hand back up after. Uh, thank you. Apologies, Chair. That's okay. Uh, Councillor Watkins. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, well, I actually quite like the design. I'd like to see them with um, some green roofs on them. It'd look lovely and uh, very good for the uh, climate but um, we have got what we've got and um, as the cabinet member for housing and communities who's actually asking our officers to go around looking for garage sites I'd find it a bit bizarre to be voting against this really and also looking at the, the actual drawing it does look like they are going to try and separate vehicles from cars which is 
not like the one that they've just recommended pre previously. So um, this one to me for three three units looks um, really acceptable. And if the fire brigade are happy with the sprinkler system and the access and everything else, um, I don't see why we shouldn't be chair. So um, I'm, I'm quite happy with what I'm seeing in front of me. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Pomfret. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, yes, the, there's one or two things about this which I'm not too happy about. Um, the height, I mean, the houses around have got quite a long garden, so you could say, well, these buildings are going to be quite a long way from uh, their neighbours. But I am also troubled by the fact that there's 12 bedrooms here altogether. Um, so you're counting on at least, I would say, two cars per house. There's only six parking spaces. Um, mortgages being what they are these days, um, I would be surprised if there's not sort of eight or nine cars represented by these three houses. So I don't know where they're going to put them all. Then these nine cars are going up and down the entrance, which we've heard what the um, problems are with that. Some of these people might have visitors, so on some days you could have 10, 11, 12 cars up there, who knows. And Marriott Road, well, Marriott Road is not what you call a rat run, but it is a shortcut. And I've been around there, it has been quite busy, so... I don't think the highways problems um, can be, uh, you know, they're not that um, vast. But on the other hand, they are quite serious and uh, I don't think we should ignore them. I, I don't really like this. I think it's too intense for the size of the plots. If there were two properties there, weren't quite so many bedrooms. I'd be much happier about it. Thank you, Chair. OK, thank you. Is there any member wish to speak that's not already spoken in which case i'll bring councillor wormsley back in councillor wormsley thank you chair um listening to what colleagues have said then i think at the moment the motion is to to reject the application um may i suggest an amendment to that chair and move an amendment to that which is that the application be granted subject to the conditions that were um listed in the presentation also one from um I can't which councillor around working hours as well, Chair. OK, can, can I just say how I'll take that, Councillor Wormsley, and to other members of the committee? Um, to be honest, that that's uh, just uh, another vote against the recommendation. So I, I'm going to take the vote as the recommendation stands at the moment, which is to refuse. If, it, if that's not voted for, then clearly somebody will have to move something else. OK. Um, Jackie, I just wanted to just come back on on a couple of things there. I just want to make sure that uh, regardless of what the decision is, that we've noted, and I'm going to ask members to either agree these or not, but let's include them anyway is what I'm suggesting. Is uh, uh, And you can tell me whether they're already there or not, is that a sprinkler system is installed in accordance with the uh, fire services request uh, the bin storage area i forget the exact wording of that um, is also put in place and that the hours of work are conditioned uh, in uh, in line with uh, what the officer would suggest um have I, they're the three things that i heard that people wanted conditioned first of all can you um, tell me they're acceptable. I I have actually written um, 15 conditions that have been agreed with the applicant in the event this is approved, and then the there will be the the two additional ones. So I can go over those with members if they wish. Um, uh, if they want to go through them. Are, are the conditions the ones in the agenda? No, there's no conditions in the agenda. 
the 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 information in the agenda is the reasons for refusal. There's no conditions on there because we were recommending refusal, but I can verbally okay. give you the conditions that I would suggest if members were to go along along right. those I'll lines. Take too much time on this, but I do want you know they're the three that I heard members concerned about. Okay, Jackie, quickly run through them. Okay. If members were to approve, then I would request that the four standard contaminated conditions were put on there, which yeah. is for environmental health for um, um, contaminated ground, submission of uh, floor heights and ground levels to make sure that um, they're acceptable. It looks level in comparison to the neighbouring properties, but we just want to make sure that they're not going to be two metres up in the air, the ground level or anything. Uh, submission for bin collection points within the access, which highways referred to. Um, for ecology, oh sorry, low level lighting and speed control measures um, and a give way sign uh, to be submitted and approved. Submission for boundary treatments, because the boundary treatments around there are poor. Uh, again, submission um, to be approved. Submission of an arboricultural method statement and root protection plan. There's a lot of trees around there in neighbouring properties, so we want to make sure that they're not impacted with diggers, etc. Submission for approval of bird and bat bricks for ecology mitigation. Um, submission for approval of landscape conditions so we can try and improve the biodiversity of the gardens and the boundaries, including mammal gaps, hedgehog gaps, fences. Submission for approval of a lighting condition during the construction and for the end product to limit the amount of light on ecological areas. Um, ensure that an ecologist is present during the clearance of the site just to, um, to make sure that no protected species are affected during the, the clearance of the site because it's become overgrown. Domestic sprinkler system, as you said. I've also suggested permitted development removal for um, rear extensions to unit one so it doesn't make the impact to uh, 18 Himley Road worse and also for obscure glazing and no opening lights uh, below 1.7 metres for two of the units where they've got side windows onto neighbouring properties at first floor. Low emission boilers, less than 40 uh, milligrams emissions, which is standard condition now for air quality. Um, electric vehicle charging points, again, standard condition that we're providing. And then there's the two additional conditions that you've said, which is the no balconies and hours of construction to be submitted. Thanks, Chair. OK, right. I think I think we're there. Um, I'll just. Councillor uh, Wormsley, did you want to come back in? Thank you, Chair. Happy to do it now or later. The only other thing I was going to suggest would be a condition on the provision of fibre optics to the property for broadband, um, given that obviously, uh, if that's possible, to as a condition, given the importance of broadband access. Uh, you've thrown me on that one. I'm not sure whether we've got that in our thing. Uh, Jackie? We've certainly got it in the SPD, I, I think, but I think it probably refers to major developments. Um, Ashley, can you help me on that? Is it just major or could we condition it on, on a minor? OK, um, Ashley. Yeah, no, I think that we can add it as an informative. I don't think it's reasonable to put that as a condition for development of this scale. OK, OK, thank you. Um, so yeah, it can't be conditioned, but we, we can request the applicant to do that if that's the case. So um, they're all things that, um, regardless of what it is, and in case there was an appeal or whatever, that they'd be within it. Um, I think all I'm going to say, I think members have covered most of the points, but I'm going to say this is a very um, a very balanced one, I think. Um, so uh, the recommendation, which was moved and seconded is to refuse planning permission uh, for the reasons well reasons was printed but uh, obviously with the withdrawn ones so there's only that one reason now <coughs> okay so uh, Wahida if you could run through the um, the voting list please certainly chair 
Um, please, can you indicate for, against or abstain when your name is called? Councillor Wormsley. Against. Councillor Hancocks. Against. Councillor Pomfret. Oh. Councillor Pomfret. We heard him say four. Councillor Pandaher. Against. Councillor Phillips. Against. Councillor Rudkin. Against. Councillor Sargent. Against. Councillor Shepherd. Oh. Miss. Against. Councillor Tandy. Sorry. Against. Councillor Tromans. Against. Councillor Watkin. Against. Councillor Wilson. Against. Chair, um, the motion's not carried. Yeah, okay. So the the recommendation to refuse has not been agreed. Uh, we need something else to be uh, to be moved then. Does any member wish to do that? Councillor. Oh, <coughs> Councillor Phillips. Um, I'd just like to re-record re my vote that um, I was in um, agreement with uh, the recommendation. I stated it wrongly, Chair. Uh, well, it had been recorded the other way, but um, OK. You were supporting the recommendation. We'll, we'll alter that accordingly. Um, it, it, it still it still makes it ten three to my knowledge. Right, Councillor Wilson. I'm, I'm not going to have a, another debate on what we've already had. Uh, I'm saying this to all members. I need something to be moved and seconded before we do. Okay, thank you, Chair. I would like to move approval of the application on the grounds that it brings um, a disused site back into use um, with the recommend with the conditions as suggested by officers but I would like to to suggest that uh, permitted development rights are removed from all three properties rather than just one I think that is fairer and gives the existing residents around there um, a, a, a greater degree of protection so I would move that chair yeah thanks for that. I'll, I'll... I I would agree with that anyway, um, and I will second the. Uh, the <laughs> what what's been suggested, right? Okay. Does any member wish to speak on that? So it's been moved and seconded approval uh, because it's uh, bringing a disused site uh, back into use. And also another condition to remove the permitted development rights. Jackie, are you happy with with that? Any problems with that? Can you clarify what permitted development rights you're removing from all three properties? Is it single storey rear extensions and first floor extensions? Uh, well, I had assumed that if any other development wanted to take place, they would need to apply for planning permission. OK, all, all PD. OK, yep. Yeah, I just want to confirm that with the person that... Uh, yes, proposed. yes, Chair. That was my intention, Chair. All PD would be removed. That's okay. just on That's just on extensions. It, do, it wouldn't cover permitted development for uh, sheds, uh, outbuildings in the garden, detached oh, buildings. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Would you... Yeah. Would, would, do, yeah. do you want to include no. that or is it just extensions to the houses that you want to include? It was just extensions I had in mind. Okay. Extensions and alterations because people had concerns about the balcony, for example. Yeah. Okay. 
Right, I think we're there. So it's been moved and seconded approval for the reason as given. Uh, Wahida, do you want to run through that again, please? I can, Chair, thank you. Um, Councillor Walmsley? Four. Councillor Hancock? Four. Councillor Pomfret? Councillor Pomfret? Against. Against. Thank okay, you. thank you. Councillor Pandahur. Uh, four. Councillor Phillips. Against. Councillor Rudkin. Four. Councillor Sargent. Four. Councillor Shepherd. Against. Councillor, oh sorry, uh, Councillor Smith. Four. Councillor Tandy. Four. Councillor Tromans. Four. Councillor Watkins. Four. Councillor Wilson. Four. Okay, so that. Um, that is that is carried. It is um, chair. I, Aye. So that means the application is approved. Um, I don't have any other items of business except except to say I do. It's just one thing. And if people will allow me to say this, um, we understand the present circumstances of not having site visits and, uh, and stuff like that. But I actually think um, the one that we've just approved would have probably benefited, and I'm guessing in other circumstances, members may have asked for a site visit on that. But um, it may be that we could look at um, technology and, and, and particularly sites like that. And I would think that maybe a, a drone uh, thing that's um, approved by the council would have been a way forward that we could have seen it uh, probably a little bit better. Thank you. Um, Councillor Tromas, just, just quickly on that. Um, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, as you're concluding, before you do, and we've got um, uh, council officers here, uh, can I just ask whether the council will be flying the flag at half-mast for uh, Captain Tom? And if not, can uh, I request that they do that? Thank you. Yeah, um, can I can I suggest that you um, email the, the uh, leader of the council and the executive directors, um, Councillor Troman? Thank you. I, I don't think these officers could, you know, in fairness, can answer that. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so thank you very much for your attendance, and I'll declare the meeting closed. Thank you. I'll just request the live stream ends.